Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Stalling for the um, Siege of the Atlas expansion featuring Quinn, Steel Mage, and Methyl, and myself. And thank you guys all for joining me here today. And uh, yeah, let's, let's start off by talking about the new expansion. It looks insane. Quinn, what was your like first reaction here? Uh, wh why the hell aren't there new skills added into the game? Like, really? That was your first reaction? You... No, 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 no. No, of course not. The, the music was, the music was like poggers and batches. Like I, and it, it looked like you know, they, when they were like, we're adding in not one but four bosses. I'm like, you know, freaking out because mm -hmm. that's kind of insane, kind of crazy. Um, no, but overall it looks it looks pretty it looks pretty crazy. It looks pretty cool. Um, but I still went. I, I guess the. I, I don't know why why where, where where's the new skills? I'm a new skill Andy, dude. Uh, mm -hmm. you know where's that at? Uh, but overall, uh, lo looking looking like yeah, really really excited. Mathel? No, I mean he's he's right. I had a similar feeling. I mean obviously it's not your first impression. Like, everything else coming out, and you're not going new skill, new skill, new skill. You're still just excited. But then afterwards, you're just like, oh, so no new skills, huh? Hmm. Okay. But no, pretty much the same thing. Like when they, for I, I expected a big end game boss thing, and when he said like four bosses, I was all just like, shit, four, no way, we get that much content. But then later, when he's like two main bosses, two lieutenant type thing, I was like, okay, that makes a bit more sense. But still, two of them, like a whole new elder shaper type encounter thing, that's that's pretty big. Um, otherwise, I mean the Atlas passive tree, like I first saw it and I went. Ah, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> like, it wasn't that much of a huge let's go moment. I was like, fucking hell, man. Path of Exile is, in fact, being Path of Exile. Um, but, nah, it's a good thing. It's definitely a good addition. And it's probably going to be one of the things that keeps you going this league. Yeah. Like, just keep investing time into it, trying different things and trying to min max your strategies and shit. And just the completion, like, completing your Atlas feels so much more meaningful right now. Whereas before, you'd get to like 80, 90, something like that. You'd go, eh, you know, I could keep completing. I could just be efficient about it. Whereas now, I think you're going to be like, I want every extra point. And that's really going to keep you going. Yeah. Steel? So I was just thinking, holy heck, I have four days before Lost Ark. How am I going to kill all these bosses, right? Right? <laughs> Fucking turbo <laughs> game, dude. <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, yeah, I think they'll be dead in four days. Uh, I know sure. From, nah, by Steel Mage? Four days. Nah, but, um... Yeah, obviously I was really relieved when they announced that they're doing a boss kill event. Because, you know, once a year we usually get a massive, like, this sort of level expansion. And the boss events are my favorite. You know, the Awaken a Kill event. I remember being disappointed that I got fourth in the Awaken a Kill event. But this time around, I think I'd be happy because of the prizes, which I guess we'll talk about later, <laughs> but, you know. So, yeah, that, my main focus is on the new bosses and the and, and the event. Yeah, and, and Quinn. How much are you getting paid to play Lost Ark? <laughs> Imagine, must be nice. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it fat chunk and change, yeah? You ain't doing it for free, well, are you? Well, well, okay, is it a so... choice? Are you making a choice intentionally? Like, could you choose to play PoE right now if you felt like it? And you just, you actually just genuinely like Lost Ark more than PoE. And it's not like... You know, like it's, it's you're actually choosing that. So I'm planning on playing Lost Ark later, like not at the start. I don't think we'll see. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm like... pretty sure someone was choosing. I do remember maybe a few weeks to a month ago or something, a, a certain Zizzeran tweet who's like, oh, "Yeah, I remember it's gonna that. be tough to tough to choose, uh -uh. man. I don't know." No, I said I'm doing the if I if I get sponsored by Lost Ark, I would do the sponsored hours and then come back to it in a month. So wait, is that what, what you're doing still? So you are coming back to PoE afterwards? You're not actually going, or? Yeah, I'm going back to PoE, 100%. Okay, thank God. <laughs> Chad was like, no, he's going to play for a week, bro. And I'm like, no shot. There's no choice. So, so you just, a couple hours. Okay, and yeah, come that's, back. What, that's so, what Ziz okay, wanted. So, he's like, oh, the start, yeah. can't miss out on the start of a new MO. It comes around once in a lifetime. That was actually Rice convinced me to miss out on the start. Yeah, Where, like, I mean. He I... sold you on not doing it. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, did, I did talk to Noogie and Rise, obviously, because they actually, you know, they're just going to play Lost Ark, right? Um, I mean, they're excited. So, you know, I, I will say a little bit of their excitement. 
Okay, Quinn. Do, you know what? You've played more Lost. You've played a decent chunk of Lost Ark. I like okay. Lost Ark. I think it's a, I think a, it's game. a game. I think it's a, I think, I think yeah. it's a, a, a mediocre game. It's a mediocre game, right? Like it's it's <laughs> definitely it's better than average. Like it's it's a, I would even say above mediocre. It's like above but, average okay. game. Like it's a, it's a six I think out of it's really good. Maybe a seven out of ten. Yeah, How is that mediocre? Do what do you mean? Okay, like Pee Wee's like a nine out of ten, right? So, uh, it, like a Pee Wee expansion release is like a nine out of ten, right? Like, well, let's you hope it is. So, like, your favorite game is releasing an expansion and it's super exciting, like, and then and then there's like this game which you know it's everything's been explored, uh, it's all the minutes have been done, it's like it's out in Korea, it's been out for years, like it's just they've just changed it to English, you know? It's this it's got the whole I'm, Eastern scheme. I'm just scheme excited to, for all the boss kills, dude. It looks like. But that can wait. Yeah, like, like Lost Ark boss kills or, or, or boss kills in the. No, like killing bosses on Lost Ark. I think that's what like, like oh, I hated yeah. the leveling. I'm excited to do that in like a month from now. And that's what like Rise from Mist Beyond. Like, there's not going to be like years and years of content coming out of launch. I'm not going to like be stuck catching up for ages. So I can just do the PUE launch, do the boss kill event, play as much PUE as I want to, and then do Lost Ark when I'm like ready to do that. That's reasonable. Yeah. That's the reason I wish they had released Lost Ark like uh, a month from now, because uh, then everyone would just play and it'd be bogus. Damn. But you know, yeah, that's what sure. it is. That's that's a more reasonable take. I'm just, you need to be convinced of that. Is the sad part, man? Because like as a POE main, when our new expansion and mega whatever everything they've been working on, we know we know that you know that there's gonna be an expansion right? coming up, and we know how big it is. I'm just like, there's no fucking chance he's playing Lost Ark, and anyone who's a POE main is not actually going to go do that. Instead, given the choice, sure, you can do it later. It's still you can get paid a lot for it, but it's not the same. It's thing. still an annoying choice because there is something special about mmo stars I, I do think lost Ark has a little bit less of a mmo feeling but like i played the new world start and i've i've missed an mmo i've missed a good mmo and like seeing so many people running around firing shit i love that i think that's really cool because i mmos was my main genre and you don't get that same feeling in poe the only thing that gives you that is the um the yellow global messages so i i think that was really cool if it was a choice that. between Matt, what, what about this? What about the new riot? Mm. What about the new riot MMO that's coming? And, and it and it collided literally with one of these, not PUE two, but like a PUE expansion. What about I don't know this? anything about a riot MMO, but it's I like, mean, it's, it, the riot MMO is like wow too. It's like it's like literally wow. Ghost Crawl is uh, making it. They've got like all the best shit. They made Arcane, bro. Everything they're doing is fucking. I mean, Valorant. You seen that game, bro? <laughs> you seen that? Yeah. They made Arcane. They're popping off, man. I'm telling you, if anyone's gonna make a sick game, those cunts are gonna make one. But like, what, what would you do? Uh, if it's, if, like, I'm not going into it blind. If, if you know, there's some betas or some hype and stuff and I see and it looks really good and I'm like, hey, this actually looks like the next big thing or, you know, it's worth doing. If I had to choose between that and a PoE expansion, that'd still be a very tough choice because, um, you know, a normal PoE league, fair enough, maybe yeah. we could um, have one off mm, and justify expansion. it to ourselves and say, fucking, you know, I've been playing PoE for 10 years, I'm allowed to do this. But at a PoE expansion, I don't think we could take that off. And like I said, if if you do, you know, plenty of your research or whatever and find out this is the game that's going to shape an environment and be the next WoW, maybe. We already know Lost Ark isn't that for us. Like, it's just yeah. maybe a good game right. to Lost play. Definitely not that. So yeah. that's that's where it's at because you already knew. We played the beta and shit, right? And we've watched everyone else, Korean um, previous people that have been playing it for a while. So we already know what it is. It's not like... You're not going into it's it fully take. blind, expecting the next big thing. I think a lot of people are actually, but I, I agree with your take. I think a lot of people are expecting You're not going in blind, man. No, they I think, I think a lot of yeah, be a big thing, but yeah, the discovery isn't there. Like, like he's saying, a World of Warcraft, the World of Warcraft going into it, that was fucking absolutely blind, and you're just like, what is this massive world that I'm now in, and yeah. uh, this is just I'm immersed. Yep. Doc leave, by the way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we're getting a new endgame, basically. Like, it's it's getting reworked a lot. Obviously, the Atlas tree is a huge part of that, and it's front-loading a lot of the gear. A lot of people talked a lot about how before it felt like you had to start at the endgame, right? You would have to have the a lot of those points from the regions unlocked and the, the middle tree. What's the middle tree actually called again? I was blank on the name. Forgotten Realms? No. Un 
Um, Uncharted Realm. Uncharted Realm, that's Uncharted, it. Yeah. yeah, like you kind of, a lot of people felt like you needed those points to even start really playing the game. And that changes a lot now because a lot of things are available early. Um, Steel, how does that affect you and like your approach to the game? Like, do you think it's a good change? Right, I was actually talking about this earlier on, on, on stream. So, Uncharted Realm passes were OP. Like, if you've actually unlocked all of them, they were essentially already the Atlas Passive Tree, right? They applied globally to all your maps. So they were really, 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 really good. Now, we're getting access to a lot of that power earlier, but I would, I, I think there's potential that the top end power of the Atlas regarding the Uncharted Realm passes and the Watchstones, because some of them have been nerfed a little bit. Obviously, Watchstone, some of the really, really OP things got sort of removed. Like, as an example, I know Quinn will like this, the Mature Stone for Harvest. So they actually nerfed Harvest a little bit, the top end of yes. Harvest a little bit. Yeah. So wait, is it, is it actually? Wait, what? Are you serious? Wait, are you, are you are you are you saying that they're gonna be people gonna be less harvest per hour with this new patch than before? No, no. no it seems but, like if you go full harvest, it's gonna be busted. Like you're just gonna be gonna be getting yeah. busted harvest every second map. Yeah. So yes, what were you saying? Just, He's talking about the watchtower. Uh, the... Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so the stuff that gets lets you get um, tier fours and and uh, better outcomes and all that kind of stuff, those were tied to watchstones, which we don't see on the passive tree anymore. But obviously, because it's all global, you know, we'll have to see how the um, overall power is compared to before. I don't necessarily yeah, so think. Worse? Okay, so there were watchstones that you could roll on Hayward Hamlet, like Bountiful, that is increasing yeah. your chance of getting tier four, and the ones that would like yeah, just yeah. give you the better outcome. We don't have anything to replace that. So you have a higher chance on the new Atlas to find Harvest, but you're going to get a lot less like tier four things. Mm, yeah, but is it nerfed overall? I guess you don't know then. Is that what you're saying? I mean, he's saying on so, the high end, on the high end of someone that's really going to go hard on Harvest, yeah. it's nerfed. But for the average person, it's oh, that wants God. to get taken Harvest, it's bigger. Thank, delete it. I just think they should just remove it, you know, like while we're at it. Just fucking remove harvest. I mean, it feels feels kind of bad because I I don't want to really engage in harvest that much at the moment. But when I was looking at the passives, I was like, okay, from a starter perspective, I think I may have to take some of these because I may need to really like do some gear. And then like after an hour of doing the pastry at the end, I was just like, you know what? I don't want to do harvest. Fuck it. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, fuck harvest. <laughs> uh, you know, unless I find it. But yeah, it just it feels it feels bad like missing out knowing the power that's there yeah it's very powerful is it anyone it. Uh, wait okay so wait you're not going harvest are you, are you, what are you guys doing you guys have yeah absolutely mm -hmm. harvest yeah Man, they're trying to win a race they'll do whatever it takes uh, yeah. gonna, okay, you know. bro. absolutely okay, i actually i they like suck harvest. that harvest Same. dick i oh, wait, so you see a harvest pop up on your map and you don't really like Fuck. do you know no. honestly it's like gonna slam your head on the table Honest, I, every time I see it, I want to... I actually am maybe in the process of changing my opinion a little bit on Harvest. I used to be a lot more like just delete Harvest from the game. But I'm, I'm potentially changing to be like, you know what? It was really nice to be able <laughs> to make step-by-step -step crafting. I, I like both. Like, I think just having Harvest for some items and full RNG for others, like a nice combination of both. Like last Epoch does that really well with some being RNG and some being like... You know, you can do it step by step. So a nice combination. So I may be changing my mind a little bit on that. Yeah. It's actually weird though. You're saying you hate it so much, Quinn, that even when you see it, you're just like, oh fuck. At no point is your character like a bit weak and you just see it and you're like, okay, yeah, I could really use, you know, this craft. And no. then I, I, this is an opportunity to upgrade my boots that I've got sitting here. You're just like, I fuck, just I want to stay weak and fuck this thing. I just see it and I just like think badge, like badge. Holy <laughs> fuck, I have to go on there and I can just fucking scroll through and shit, look at all this shit and get like click. I gotta have like a little, little stash has of items that I've saved preemptively because you can't like store them, like more than 10 of them or whatever. So you gotta like have that all ready to go and then you get to sit there like rolling the item. I just, I hate it, bro. I hate it. It's so, it's it just so ruins the momentum like that. Your gameplay experience just is tainted the immediately the, the second you see that thing appear because it's so powerful you have to do it i mean and that's what I mean. that that's not like a lot of people are shit, shitting on you for that but like, it's not actually a very bad take it does really take you out of the gameplay loop that was the worst thing about harvest in original harvest league 
was how hard it breaks the gameplay loop and there was even longer for like newer players especially they'd be sitting there for fucking 30 minutes going like the fuck am i doing so obviously that's a lot better now but it really does pull you out of the gameplay loop in defense yeah. of Harvest, yeah. well, infinite stuff in the old one. Oh yeah, my bad. Yeah, so they, they changed it so you don't have to like scour your items anymore. It just mm -hmm. it acts as an alk and a chaos. Yeah, and it's also a FOMO issue, right? Because you don't. Ha Quint thinks he has to interact I skip with it. it. I skip it. You can now. skip it. But like, yeah, and that's yeah. that's fine. You know, that's fine. You can do that. That's fine. Because time is your that most would... valuable resource. You can it's just, just like it's like what it is like what it's doing though. It's like it's like getting like fifteen chaos and just deleting it. So it's like it's like when well, you skip the harvest. Do you interact with every piece of content that you come across though? I mean, maybe you do, but I definitely don't. I skip like I skip delve. I skip delve and I skip harvest. Yeah. When I like, sick of my character is <laughs> like not a piece of shit, and I can like think like I can get away with it. I skip harvest, but that's like it's like still, okay, so that takes like, a long time. My, my take is you've got a loot filter, right? So you've got the loot filter for your items and your currency, right? And you don't pick up everything. And it's the same for content, right? You just... I'm, I don't like doing ha uh, heist, so I just don't do heist. And that's fine. Because you, 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 you're getting that time back, right? Yeah, but not it's fine, interacting it's fine though. Like, thing is, the heist, the whole heist thing in Dell was like... Yeah, you could specifically maybe you want to get some delve items, or maybe you want to like fossil craft, or maybe there's like a high specific unique you need, or like you know some implicit like scepter thing. Um, but it's not so powerful that like you just like the the, the, the those ones that I don't feel bad at all, just like not doing those because I don't feel like I'm missing out that much. With harvest, I feel compelled to do it because of its power. I mean, because it's so powerful. strong. I mean, heist is like one of the most. Uh, uh, heist is busted for currency. Heist is busted. Catalyst I, I, as well. well. The, the, at least my perception of heist is that it's fucking bitch, okay? And, and and it's not like harvest is like if you compared it to heist, it'd be like twice as good. Like you really literally two so? x. Like literally two x. Like just the way you can get the insane items early. It kind of like the reforge similar mods with like yeah, re reforge more likely is like, so busted. Like, you know, the ones we just roll life on jewels, like what, like ones where you just, it's just insane, bro. Like, well, the differences between those is one, you feel like you're missing out on a lot. The other, you're not like with heist, you don't actually like, yes, you're saying it might be better currency than anything else, but you don't feel like you're missing that I, because you still, you know, you go do other content, you're still making currencies, whatever. It's like the same thing. It's just slightly worse or some shit. Whereas, um, harvest, you are like, oh. I actually don't have access to craft this item as good as it could possibly be. Or I don't have access to make this item um, that I wanted to make unless I've got a huge stack of currency. So you feel like you miss it out. Whereas with Heist, no, you can just ignore it and go, yeah, whatever, and someone else is there, possibly making more money. There is, there's also a very big difference there between Harvest and Heist. Because with Heist, you're finding either the Grand great Blueprint or a normal Blueprint and you're putting it away somewhere, you can run that later. With Harvest, you are making the choice to leave that behind, and you do not have the choice to run that later. You're like, you're not storing it for the future. So that has a worse feeling of FOMO as well. Yeah, if, if you could literally just, if you if there was like a, you know, like Enha Beastery, you can have like a yeah. thousand beasts in your Beastery or whatever. If, it, if Harvest was like that, and you could just like go, store, 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 store. Go, go kill the next thing, store, 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 and just like, and then whenever, like, I don't know, two hours from now, you get an item, a base that you want to craft, you could then go like you just open up the harvest crafting bench scroll through click on the one you want and do that i, I would be like you know what Fuck it harvest isn't that bad you know it's completely op and broken but you know whatever dude like at least i don't have to sit there and every time i go into this map i have to like sit there and do that process that i just absolutely hate is this more from maybe just a content creator like streamer point of view like you feel so taken out of your entertainment cycle and you're painfully aware of how boring this is because like i oh. i'm i'm saying from like a maybe harvest league point of view because um actual harvest league i remember just being so painfully aware of how boring what i was doing was i'd be like okay map 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 stand still for like 20 minutes while sorting stuff out and i'm just like doing almost nothing and like if anyone's watching like this sucks and then if i go check out someone else's stream what build are they playing oh they're standing in harvest <laughs> all of a sudden doing nothing um what does their build do okay i gotta wait another five minutes okay now they, they do their build 
So is it more from that perspective for you, Quinn, or do you just in general think Harvest is... Bro, um, during is Harvest content? League, man, during Harvest League, I had like a quad tab of like stored Horticrafts and I would get an item and I would... And that, that was awesome. I love that when you could store infinite because I could just have all the good crafts. And I would, I would sit there in the Harvest area playing fat music, be like, bro, there's like a one in three chance at this lands. Am I going to get it? And then I press, you know, on the beat, I press the thing. It was actually bad chest content. And it was fine. Whereas maybe, the, I mean, to be fair, I think the newer one is definitely more objectively boring to watch because of the fact you can't store like a whole quad tab of stuff and you can't do like the big events where you do like, you know, you go, you get an item from scratch and craft it. It's like the whole time you just have to like spend whatever it is mm -hmm. rolling through. I mean, yeah, I think partially, but no, I think it's just dog shit in general. Like, yeah. I, even if I wasn't streaming, I don't like doing the harvest in the middle of a map. And when you asked that question as well, everybody in chat was like, no, this is a problem they suffer from too without being streamers. Well, I wasn't asking like the populace. I was just asking yeah. what Quinn's perspective on yeah, yeah. like the boringness of um, taking him out of it sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely interesting. I don't think they would ever make it similar to Incursion though, because I feel like they're already uncomfortable with how much power there is. That's why they don't like making it easily tradable and stuff. So I would be very surprised if they like made it into, you know, the incursion temple thing. Making it easily tradable shit is just, it's another form of making it an orb basically. Yeah. And it's like, do you, do you want to make an enormous fire orb? Yes. Make an enormous fire orb. Otherwise this is just like a sidestep roundabout way of making it. It's the exact same thing. Yep. If they don't want to make that, they're not going to. So yeah. yeah. Just delete harvest. There's the final work. All right. And, and Quinn, how do you feel about everything being like front loaded now so that the game starts earlier? You don't have to like do all those like end game bosses as much anymore to get things that affect everything. Um, I mean, initially, I mean, it's obviously impossible to tell before I <laughs> actually play the game. Cause what if I play the, the new Atlas system and the, the new front loaded system doesn't feel as good. I, I highly doubt it though. I, I, I hate watchstones and I hate like the whole gymnastics of like, you know, doing the leapfrog thing where you have one in there and you go two and then you go three and you do all this, all this bullshit. I don't like, I don't like that. Um, I, I honestly, I, this new tree, like it, I think it looks more complicated initially, but then when you think about it, it's actually a lot more simple and a lot more basic. And, 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 and actually I think it's, it looks like it's going to be a better end game progression for yeah. like normies like me. Yeah. And, and what's especially, so I, and I say, and, yeah, I like, yeah, yeah. And what's especially cool is that you don't even need to kill any of the in-game bosses to go straight to tier 16, right? It's all just one progression. Like, so many players are currently struggling, right, in the current atlas because, oh, I have to kill certain bosses. Maybe they're not good at killing bosses, and then they have to get watchstones. Now you go straight to 16 on one atlas. That's very cool. Um, That's badass. Yeah. Mathel, how does it affect you? Like, uh, is it going to, like, change your approach a lot? You mean, what, like, front-loading? Yeah, front-loading you know, instead the... of, like, having everything at the back. Um, <clears throat> I think it'll just give me more fun early on, basically, because I get there eventually, um, yeah. and it, it just takes longer. Like, I, I don't try and speedrun it or anything, and I slowly fill out my atlas, and I kill a few bosses, and then um, I think I'll roll another character to have a bit of more fun time in filling out the later half again. Um, so I think it's just going to give me more fun on one character probably for longer. Like I usually sit on the first character for like a week and I think maybe if the character itself is fun enough, I'll be able to just enjoy it for longer for like a week to two weeks on one character. Um, and initially when I was looking at the Atlas, I was like, okay, I need to um, try and make sure I'm getting the good map things and filling out good stuff. And then I went... Fuck that. That's what, like, Ziz and fucking Steel Mage are going to do. I'm just going to take the fun shit. <laughs> I'm going to go for some fun shit and then suffer with maps and figure it out later if I have to. Right, so you're not going to go for a lot of the um, drop rate stuff? Like, I think I you more or less have to take the middle stuff yeah. somewhat early, but I'm going to try and get that a little bit later. But, uh, you know, take a few fun things and then go and get that when I start getting hard stuck in fucking tier fours. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's what's so nice about the Atlas right now. Like you've seen like so many content creators are putting out like, this is the best tree, follow this one and stuff. And obviously I, I love my clickbait, but we actually didn't do that this time because I really feel like there just isn't a best tree. And I really like how 
every time I've been watching people do trees, I'm like, this is so different. This is so different from mine. So I think that's really cool. There's just so many different trees and it's all about like what kind of content do you prefer? Well, yeah. think about this. Think about this. If everyone go, if there's a meta tree that everyone picks and it specializes in doing like one type of content, it means there's going to be an abundance of that of that currency for that from that content and the value of that stuff will go down and the value of the stuff that people aren't doing the more niche you know like i don't know full betrayal build or full whatever build it will go up so it's like you're actually an idiot if you go the full meta cuck like you know you know i don't know what they're all doing i haven't looked but well really cool. you yeah, want to I mean, go try just something weird yeah because a lot of people have talked about taking the essence node it's right at the beginning leads up to the middle you can get the you know you can get all that essence stuff it leads on the main path that most people i think are going to take so essences are going to be worth less. That's exactly, you know, that's exactly what you're saying, right? Mm. Sure. But also, 100%. also though, a lot of people are taking essences specifically for self-crafting, not just trading as well. Like, and this is something that's going to be a very popular choice for SSF too. It's just, it's just nice to have early. Yeah, obviously SSF right. doesn't care about economy. Yeah. I think I guess it still depend on how generic um, the reward is. Because like if um, the Harbinger ship in the end ends up being busted, it's yeah. just currency, right? And it's just shitting out currency, and everyone can do that, and it'll still just be fucking. Um, well, pure it'll funds. dilute that currency, though, right? So it'll dilute like chaos. Because remember, the currency, like, what, what exalts and shit. Everyone still needs those and wants those, and it'll still like. No, but, but, you know. what, do they give you fusing orbs? Yeah. What fucking expand? What what league was it where like was it? It was when they do duplicating heist or something, right? It, yeah. All sorts of it was just generic currency, but then lots of other stuff that you could get like went up in price by massive so if you did betrayal you could then get the uh the staff that gives you like double damage or you get like the you know the helmet or whatever and you could sell that for a fuck ton more because there's way less people doing that because they're all in heist now the point your point still stands uh, could, absolutely yeah. but i think uh, the more generic the thing like if it is specifically currency then i think yeah. that could still be the the main strat regardless <laughs> but that's that, that was a similar idea i had that you basically can't lose as long as you specialize in something like if you specialize in abyss you're probably going to be printing money if no one else is doing that um if you specialize in betrayal then yeah same thing but i think the losing play is if you don't actually specialize in anything if you just take a little bit of everything then you're basically getting almost no real juice out of yeah. any of the content and just not making any of the good money because it seems to be very synergistic right now like take one or two nodes fucking nothing you need basically all of them in one um direction of content to make the real money yeah and you bring up a good point there as well because not not just for like fully specializing but it looks very like rewarding for focusing okay i'm just going to be mapping or i'm just going to be bossing so i do wonder if they just want us to respec a lot and use a lot of orb of unmaking or a lot of people have seen like in the uh, in the trailer there's like a second button so a lot of people are like well is there a second tree is that just like a developer uh image that's like left over or is it to disable the tree? Like, there's a lot of tinfoil theories about that, but there is two buttons uh, in one of the videos. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to, um, so Vero, I think, mentioned another streamer I had a good point. When you have, so you, you, you're kind of incentivized to hold other content and respec into it, which might feel bad. Like, for example, right? Um, normally, I would save all my Einhard missions until I had my Einhard passes ready yeah. to go in bottom right. And I could just do that section of the tree with all my Einar passes in one go. And now it's going to be kind of similar, but maybe worse because you can't just farm the other regions and hold that region because you you literally have to respec into the left side Einar passes. Because I don't know anyone who's going to do the Einar passes at the start of the league yet. But um, you, you're, all, you're obviously going to be accumulating them over time and you're going to want those passes when you do start running it. So you're going to want to respec in and out, in and out. You kind of already do that anyway, but it's going to be a bit... Yeah, I don't know. Is it way better I mean, now? Are you guys feeling isn't that? It, isn't, it the opposite? isn't it the opposite? Because what do you mean? before it was like you had to save the passives to use it in that zone because you were going to get the thing. So now you just have to save the passives until you get that spec on the tree or whatever. And then you never have to worry about it ever again. Because I hated that. Like, I just wanted to like, I'm like, oh, I need to do betrayal. And like, and you have to like do it in a specific area. I hated that because, I mean, maybe I'm just too hit as fuck. But it seems way easier now because once you get that on the tree, you can just... Whenever you want to do Ena, you can just do Ena. 
Um, what do you want to do? You, you know, you just do it. You don't need to worry. As long as you, you know, there'll be that initial like, like few days at the beginning when you get the first hundred points, but after that, you just you just do it anywhere and you're good to go. So the well, the, the official Path of Excel account just said in our chat, "Don't worry about the button." So it might just be a developer thing. Oh. Well, I thought oh, yeah, that was like the it. double debate where they're just like <laughs> saying you saw nothing, look, look, look away. Maybe, maybe it's uh, it's it could be any, could go any direction, could go any direction. Mm. Yeah, mm. but yeah, it's uh, either either way, very very interesting. I do wonder if they will have a button to disable the tree because like especially this is. Maybe they won't because this is more of a hardcore problem. But imagine that, you know, you get a really beefy character, you're playing hardcore, and you take some riskier nodes, like say like Rogue, Metamorph, and uh, Seance, right? Which are pretty scary. Or the, the ones with the 20 ghosted exiles. And then you die on your strong character or you're just leveling a new one. So you have a pretty weak, like level 72 character and your first map is 20 ghosted exiles. And you're like, oh no. Like, do you just have to spec out of that each time? Like all the riffy stuff or... Yeah, that could be scary. I mean, specking out of that is just like one point, right? If you're particularly, you know, worried about that. Sure. Um, otherwise, I think you're just not ready for hardcore, Zizrin. That's that's what it is. Bro. If you're ready for hardcore, you take on the fucking challenges without complaining, uh, or you just get wrecked and go home, Bro. play softcore, where where the fun enjoyers are. <laughs> okay, okay, where the fun enjoyers are. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Still, it would be uh, it would be interesting. It will be uh, cool to see what they do. I I don't think there's a disable button or a second tree. To be fair. Probably not. That yeah. Sounds like it'd be weird to just disable everything. Like I said, I think the solution to that is just unspec one or two of those yeah. particularly dangerous passives. Because most things are just like profit, right? There's only a few that are really upping the challenge. Yeah. Steel, what about, was there anything like that really stood out to you on the new Atlas tree that you thought was like particularly good or unbelievably strong? Anything you really want to take? Well, I mean, I'm just a metacock, right? So I'm already yeah. taking the metacock tree immediately. So obviously harbingers, right? Yeah. So there's Wait, the guaranteed harby. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's a metacock tree. I mean, I, we, you know, I can show it to you <laughs> later if you want. <laughs> he doesn't but, want to see yeah, that. Based... <laughs> But basically, you take the shaping stuff because obviously you want the map sustained, and then that naturally leads you to a section of nodes along that path. Notably, shrines, boxes, essences, and harbinger. And so you just take all of that. You still got a little bit of wiggle room to experiment, but you've got like a core. I want to say like 60, 70 points is pretty core cool to start with if you're if you're a meta cuck, so which I am. So. Quinn, what about you then? What what was like standing out the most well, to I, you? Wait, am I meta cut? Well, I I I don't like the idea of having to do a bunch of like uh, like stuff that I have to do stuff with. I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make the most like juiced map. Just ju and every map is gonna be juiced. Like I picked the map boss, the rare mobs, the extra map drops, the uh, all the stuff that just works. And, and then I was like, well, essences. You just click those. I'm gonna just get essences. And then harbingers. You just you just have them, bro. And then you kill them. So I put those as well. And then I just went up to the top near the end game stuff. Like, and then, well, I'm not, I'm thinking I'm going to take points out of the map area once I have a bunch of maps and I'm going to get the end game mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, I yeah, just wanted to make well. the. Yeah, that sounds meta. Cut as as fuck, but no yeah. harvest. Wait, no, no harvest. No you harvest. don't have no to take harvest. harvest. Yeah. I'm not taking any you harvest. This that. is pure rare mobs, map boss, map drops. Mm -hmm. Yep. Harboring. It's just so you're just in the map and there's just lots of mobs. And then I was thinking about going a full yep. shrine build, but then it looked like the the one shrine was kind of rippy because you pick it up and then you fucking take more damage or something. So Covetous like, okay. shrine, That's yeah. Yeah, yeah, game yeah. Farming yeah. Medic, okay, yeah, Grim, yeah. yeah. Grim, Grimro said you don't have to take that. Yeah, in his guide that you know, I you know, I oh, should be pretty seen it. <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, I've I've not. I did my blind. I did a blind tree. Okay, so I mean, if I if I by mistake made the meta, I guess then fuck. I mean, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, so it is. Just great minds think alike, you know, Quinn. It's uh. It is what it is. I swear on my mother. Okay, I see. Like, okay, so you need to stop and, and even saying that. I swear on my mother. I I think like the, the Twitch meta is to swear on people that have died for like extra extra points. Okay, well I'm not doing. So, I mean, so I could do that. <laughs> no, Jesus, don't, Quinn, don't, don't put I'm your foot in your mouth here. 
<laughs> but um, I, I don't think it's as chat of a play as you're making it sound, like creating the matter. I think it just means you're going the path of least resistance. <laughs> like, it's you're just flowing down where you think is going to be, you know, the best for the sustain, which is what a lot of people are doing, as opposed to being like, I want to specialize early on in something else, you know, which is not what want juice, the matter though? is. So you want like just a, like a bunch of harbingers in your map? Have you done that zone where there's like harbinger guys in there, bro? And then there's just like a million dudes. And you <laughs> Mate, I've done speed. it enough times that I'm fucking sick of it. And that's why I'm not taking it right now. I fucking uh, hate like going into a map and then just seeing like this thick harbinger. If my character especially isn't ready for it, because it's like a new one. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot this thing's here. Uh, whatever, I'm just not going to take it. Because I mean, it's unless you're really juicing these things, it's honestly not that much of an increase in like currency or anything. It's just fucking annoying. Well, Math of Walk is a little bit three or three then. Like what are the main things you're taking and excited for? Um, I think to begin with, I was going for the betrayal to fill out some um of the veiled crafts and also hopefully start farming Katarina to mm -hmm. see if we get any fat starves or helms, that sort of thing. Because I think that could be big money early on. Um, especially because if you take all the betrayal shit, it looks like you're going to be pumping out Katarinas like that. Um, as well as that, I think I wanted to try out the new breach thing, see what that thing's like, uh, just experiment a bit with that. And, um, uh, don't remember what else. Then I think I'm trying to go up to, since I'm already on that side of the tree, expedition, that's right. Cause, um, you know, with the new implicits and shit and, um, the currency orbs and whatever, expedition rogue, it's going to be yeah. up there. Like, you, you want to rogue, you want to make some base items and then turn them into godly, you know, um, new influence things. Yeah, and, like, just, we're going to be starved for influence stuff, so just getting extra influence things in general is going to be really nice, I think. I think Expedition's going to be kind of, like, underrated. Depends how hard it's going to be to get with the the new Conquerors. Mm. I looked at the rogue build, because I was like, ah, I, I, like, rogue is fucking pog, right? Uh, but I remember the expedition is in really un inconvenient places on the on the path, so you have to mess your uh, little passive tree up pretty hard to to get the wrong. Well, like the it worked. It worked for me because, like I said, I was going more on the right side where <laughs> there is the betrayal, the breach, yeah. and then the expeditions all over yeah. as well. It's, and, it's um, really hard to fit expedition with the uh, Grimrose tree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. dude. Did you find that as well, Steel? <laughs> Mm -hmm, hard yeah. to copy paste a tree and then alter it in any way shape or form so mm -hmm. Very um difficult. i i really like ritual on the knee tree i think that's my favorite um it's very time intensive is the only thing i don't like about ritual and i actually it's kind of like you know like rituals they don't feel really challenging that's why i really like, felt ultimatum was just a better ritual because it was very intense fight the entire time but reward wise i think it's so nice and I feel like I always end up struggling on like getting the blood vessels on Soul Cell Fun and getting that node that just gives me finished blood vessels every like 10 rituals. I really like that. I think that's really, really cool for like my play style. So, Ritual is one of those that like definitely one of those that I'm talking about that needs like a lot of the good stuff yeah. to start paying off. Cause like a lot of them kind of don't do much, but you still need them. And then ultimately you get like that big one or two ritual nodes that just really make it farmable. But I don't particularly like that um, current league mechanic. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it'll be really good for Soul Cell Phone. It gives me a lot of the things that I might struggle to get anyway. Mm -hmm. And same with like, I hate doing heist as my least favorite content to do, but I end up having to do so much of it for unique jewels or cluster jewels or catalysts. I really wish they would buff catalysts from metamorph i still feel like they they tried to do that and i still feel like heist is by far the best place to get cluster or, or sorry uh um catalyst like that's where i go to for catalyst and i hate that i really wish that i could just focus really hard on metamorph and it was would be better than heist i mean i think you can dude did you look at the metamorph nodes yeah that's the one I've, i'm feeling like i'm missing out on the most because i was like looked at the first few ones and like oh, it's kind of shit and then as i got further up the tree eventually I went, oh, fuck. But you, you, get like so really you get so much from Heist. You get so much from Heist. 
But you'd get so much from Metamorph with this new system. Like, just about, you can almost guarantee a Metamorph in every map, and then you get, like, twice as much Metamorph shit, and then the juice bar will fill up way quicker. I think you're going to get a lot of Catalyst from a Metamorph if you specialize in You're it. not super wrong, but the only thing as well is the Metamorph is also probably the least balanced league mechanic. So on Hardcore, it can be really scary. Like, there's a few that will burst you down, especially if you're taking the Rogue Metamorph and you don't know what you're getting. Suddenly, you're going to get one that comes out of left field and just like, Hello, smack! No, nah, it's definitely, yeah, it's more of a softcore thing for sure. Yeah. Every time I played hardcore, I, you know, with especially these past events, I don't ignore metamorphs um, just because fun, challenge, whatever. And basically everyone calls me an idiot. They're like, you should not be doing a metamorph. And I'm like, but it's fun. Yeah, you do it on Gauntlet. I, I was watching you do it on Gauntlet and I was like, what's he doing? And then you died and I was like, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, but that that death was bullshit. I think in the last gauntlet, I killed a lot of uh, metamorphs. I didn't ignore any of them. Killed plenty of them. I mean, they're fine. You just got to know what you're walking into. Yeah, yeah. There, there's something. There's something. That's for sure. Um, something I want to bring up. What do you guys feel about the uh, abyss one, where you can get you know five or six rare stats on an abyss jewel? Deal. Um, I kind of skipped that one because I think that's more of a chase trade league kind of take, mm -hmm. you know, like if you get something really OP from it, you can sell it for a fortune, but because it is kind of, it's actually a, f a little bit further out than I would like. Yeah. So, you know, if you are already pathing towards all the boss stuff at the top alongside the uh, abyss stuff, that's fine. But if you don't actually commit to going for the boss nodes at the top, a little bit too point intensive for me. I think it's like six points or something. Yeah. So, I I, I kind of left it. Even when I took Abyss, I kind of I kind of left it out. When? No, that one's looked fun to me. Like I yeah. wanted to take it just to see what's gonna start dropping. Like if it throws out some nutty jewels, I don't think it's gonna be that profitable until you know you're really farming it and leagues established enough where people can pay multiple exalts for a jewel. But I think fun. it looks fun, and I wanted to try it out. Yeah, I know you're allergic to fun. <laughs> But it's also it's really a lot of a lot of people are focusing hard on that it's you know um, five or six stat and people are going like well it's going to be so hard to get a good six stat but it's going to be way easier to get a good four stat and that is already incredibly strong so if I'm even half regularly getting really solid four statters with maybe like even something useful as the fifth stat that's already pretty good I think people are focusing a little bit too much on how rare it would be to get a six stat. It doesn't change much, to be honest, because they already drop us three or four stats right now. The problem in the Abyssal Jewels right now is literally how hard it is to get the rarest tiers. So, like, I just then made some Abyssal, like, a build with some Abyss stuff late in the league, and you cannot find Abyssal Jewels with, like, three or four um, damage-type stats with Tier 2 or Tier 1 mods. It's always going to be, like, one, maybe two Tier 1s, Tier 2s, and then Tier 3s, 4s, 5s, just, just shit. It's just too rare for the high end. And um, I don't think that's going to change much. You're just gonna, it's going to be, you know, an extra couple of stats will increase how, like, slightly better the bad jewels are. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, I think it is pretty exciting. What about you, Quinn? Uh, well, I just think you have to commit. Uh, because of the way that the, the tree works is, like, that you got nodes that make stuff more likely to appear. Mm -hmm. And then you got nodes that make the things that appear better and drop more shit. So the more like the more specs you put, you know, the more things you put into it, making it like appear more, means the value of the stuff dropping is now worth more. And just and it's vice versa, right? So if you just go a few points and you don't full send, uh, then what's the point? Like I I I'm I'm not doing any any just like oh I'm gonna put a couple points in there because maybe I'll get something good. Nah, bro, you either commit and go big dick into whatever you're going, or you just don't pick it at all. Like, and and I think the chances of you getting a six standard jewel with good rolls is like it's it's like you you you're literally playing the lottery. Like, what's the point? It's just it's just yeah, like but, people, but that's you know, what I that's what I just said. It. Like, that's what I just said. Yeah, that you have a higher are, chance like, to get a four stat one. Basically, you have a higher chance to get a four stat yeah. one. That is really good. So it's yeah, it's they, still gonna be know, nice. They, I've, I've tried roll. I've tried rolling like T one fizz jewels with life, and it just ne it doesn't happen, bro. Shit doesn't. It doesn't happen, bro. That's fair. Unless you have craft it, then it does happen. <laughs> this house is and should be deleted. And it, do you know what I see you thinking? Like, mm -hmm. if there's any PvE just watching, okay, listen up. This is how you balance harvest. Node on the tree. They put. They get the vile area, bro. Like the the corrupted part of the tree. 
okay? And it says, like, delete harvest, right? Okay, harvest is disabled. But then it times two all currency in the game. Or, or maybe harvest is deleted, um, but you can, then you can, there's like, then you can pick one point beyond that harvest is deleted. And the point after that is like times two essence or like times two harbingers or times two, uh, you know, betrayal, right? So you remove one mechanic and you can, uh, you can double another mechanic perhaps. Or because this mechanics that like you could just get like they, that would be kind of cool, right? If you could just ex you know you're like I actually hate this mechanic and I, I yeah. want to choose to opt out of that, and then I can double the mechanic that I like. Like I mean, bro. Or you could sell harvest and get ten additional points. Like you fully disable harvest, like you said, and then you can add ten additional points on the atlas tree. But you yeah, never find be, harvest. Yeah, other yeah. you only have to you only have to do that to one thing because otherwise the meta would be like. Disable like multiple and then just get the entire tree. I don't know. It would, you, maybe it had to be unique. Maybe yeah. a little jewel you're socking into the tree, perhaps. Like a threshold jewel for the atlas. Well, you can, you, well, you can oh, roll it with divine shield. <laughs> yeah. Masteries, oh, yeah. socket threes. It's gonna be great. Just wait until we get the uh, atlas map cluster jewels. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pog right fucking create your own extra content and then just stick it in there and... well if, you, if the meta would be this, the, the, you just have five cluster jewel setups with like all and it's all the same mechanic and you go into a map and there's like the whole floor is just covered in harboring it's like you just like the fucking <laughs> whole you know yeah that's what people want man they want to be able to you know juice it's true um but yeah no so much exciting things there i i honestly feel like out of anything from this expansion the atlas tree is probably my favorite thing to just make the core game and mapping more exciting so that's that's what i'm the most excited about more than anything i personally don't care that much about all the, the the new builds and stuff i just want the game like playing to be enjoyable all the time and i think that's what this accomplishes um but i, I want to talk a little bit about the boss kill event as well uh, Mathel, is that something that makes you want to participate? You do really well in races. Have you thought about doing the boss kill event? No. Um, like, I do well enough in races if, you know, I create my own category, essentially. Hmm. And that's like, okay, I'll go HC and I'll try to take a demi that no one else wants. And uh, it's, um, you know, kind of under underutilized because it's not that good. So then I've got my own little challenge within the challenge. Like, this there's there's literally no point in me trying like i'm not going to play 24 hours on day one and then 20 hours on day two i'm not going to speed run the metacuck strats and play a metacuck build uh it's just there's no chance like i'm going to get two maps and some cunt's going to be killing maven at that point. <laughs> like what why would i sacrifice all of my fun for that that's fair just for the chance of maybe you know being somewhat competitive I also think it's a very anti-fun playstyle. Like, imagine starting the league out and all this new shit, all this new everything around you, like league mechanic and Atlas tree and whatever, and you're just like, all right, fuck all of that. I've got to play the build I've played a hundred times and ignore everything, just sidestep all of that and then kill somebody. And then, okay, now I get to the new boss, okay? Now I get to study it while someone else fucking does it and check out the mechanics and then learn it up and then fucking make sure I've already got a grasp on what it does. Like, that's, nah. You got to go in Dude, blind. You still do it, though. Trust. We don't you can do it on a non medicac battle, battle, battle. Right, you can you you can do it on like just do 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 like the dead eye ice totem guy or whatever. Do it, except yeah, and then I have zero competition, right? Like I don't, <laughs> I'm not in the competition by doing that. I'm fucking last. But I mean, I mean, you can still you're participating, bro, and it's like, dude, what if you get a? How is that participating? I'm participating by playing blood? softcore. Okay, bro, what do you get a mage blood? What if I get a what mage get blood? To... That, that that doesn't make up the difference, mate. I could start out with a stack of a hundred exalts. That ain't gonna make up the difference between oh, what I, how I'm playing and how these guys are playing. True, I agree. It is very interesting. To be fair, there's a lady who's trying to get a gentleman's agreement between the people participating to go in blind for the boss. Which I I will do if um if I'm gonna be for first. If it's for second, I would I would practice. That's usually what I do on bosses. But for first, I'm Wait, okay. What is that? So that you just they don't they like don't practice on standards. Don't price those. Yeah, yeah so probably, probably, everybody's, probably everybody's. Probably everybody's gonna watch movie, videos. Yeah. I don't think people like this. Yeah. 
But I, I wouldn't practice you can't, that. If you, if, you, if you did a gentleman's agreement for the watching videos, some rat would just watch videos anyway. So, like, because you could, there'd be no way of telling, right, if they didn't. I suppose you, suppose you could do the same thing on standard, though. I mean, it's sense. just, I mean, it's just if you want to, right? It's not like people have to, but it makes for an interesting. To be, to be fair, I think the main reason people will watch videos is because Maven existed. Yeah. Like, she just, I mean, she's really bad boss to do blind, mate. I mean, she's a, she's a shocker. You gotta to be watch blind. videos. Yeah, Maven blind is fucked. And I like, just gotta I gotcha just, mechanic. No, Maven should be deleted. Memory game. No, should be deleted. I love Maven. I, I want did, more you, stuff like that in the memory game. Memory game should be deleted. Wait, no, actually, the song. No, I like me. Okay, do you say Moonlight right now? No, I was gonna say, I think someone on this podcast has actually done a boss blind. Because, Ma Mathel, you did Maven blind, right? Did you figure out the memory game? Um, like on... I it was spoiled. There was no oh. way I fucking like like I I, I didn't I haven't seen it, but I had enough times like in my chat people have been like, has he seen Dash. Memory Game? Does he know the Memory Maven thing? So I didn't see yeah. it or anything, but like at that point I already kind of knew what it was. Yeah. Uh, it, it, either Shit. way, it was still basically impossible to figure out. <laughs> like I I came yeah. in and I was like, okay, so I'm pretty sure this like color coding shit is memory game but it still seems so hard to fucking even see to begin with like the actual Rash. visuals of it i didn't really like catch the first time um when it popped up i was like wait fuck it already started and it was like over the okay i fucked it up yeah it's weird i think i, I got it down exact... in six pause yeah. but yeah it was i had that exact same experience time. it feels like you can see boss mechanics when you know what to look for but when you don't know what to look for they just completely invisible. The reason for the that is you experience. covered your entire arena in the fucking doll. It was like a Bob Ross painting. They were everywhere. No wonder you couldn't see. And, <laughs> and I still killed it. I still That's killed true. it, didn't I? That's true. You did How many it. times did you log out? I can't remember, honestly. Probably a lot. I think my first kill I logged out a lot and it was embarrassing. The second kill I don't think I logged, but the first one was embarrassing. <laughs> it was so fun to watch. I was so stressed out. People are saying it logged out five. Yeah, right. it was, the first kill was embarrassing. It was, it was fun. Really so. But yeah, and you I already think I redeemed like, myself for it, and you knew, and you knew what was coming, right? I had done a run on softcore, mm -hmm. and I oh, still you even see practiced that. it on softcore. Fuck, that's a big story action. I did that. I know he would do that. I know he would do that. I, I, I don't yeah, know. Like, I only only giga swords, sounds, bro. Yeah, that is similar to practicing Moonlord before going in, and no oh, one would do that. God, no. Here, Mathel, you'll be proud of me. I have never played the, the build that I'm playing ever before. I've never touched it. It's a fresh build for me. What What, what is... There's no way it's not something extremely fucking meta -cuck Of course it's a meta -cuck. Why would I compete in anything else? What I'm not going to show up to a NASCAR race picking? in a bathtub with wheels and go like, Let's go! We're going to race, bro! Like, of course Why I'm going meta -cuck. It's a explosive arrow. Content. Explosive arrow totems. You You've never done explosive arrow totems? No, never. All right, well, look, let's be honest, mate. It's it's a totem build, right? So you've played like a thousand of the exact same thing. You played forbidden right totems like a hundred times, right? Three. Three hundred times. That's there three. you go. Three, just Holy. three. Holy. <laughs> well, I'm saying that's the exact same play style. Put down your totem projectiles, pew, 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 and you're like, oh, yeah, this is new for me, and it's going to be... Nah, mate. Okay, by, by that logic, build? you never play yeah, new yeah, builds. Yeah. By that logic, you never play new builds in this game. Everything is yeah, similar by do. that. Definitely. There's lots There's lots of different archetypes that I'm playing that aren't the exact same shit. I mean... Yeah, like a totem that. build, it's pretty much always a totem build, dude. Okay. Like, all yeah, totem it's, builds it's are the same. All caster builds yeah. are the same. All slam builds are the yeah. same. So there's five builds. Mm. Kind of, yeah. But <laughs> slight, slight, <laughs> you know, variations on them. <laughs> Oh no. Are you are you going champion with totems? I'm really struggling to decide because I actually kinda wanna wait on like this this is a little bit of a cock move obviously, but uh, I'm waiting till PoEDB gets the data mined uh stats for the boss so I can see if it's like heavy hit damage. Uh because if it's got like really like huge slam things, then I think champion is just the play. And I thought that the race was just going to be for the two new ones, but it's Maven and the two new ones, so that's going to add some time that I wasn't expecting. So, um, I thought the race would be like 20 to 30 hours, 
with just the new two bosses because the 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 outlet is so streamlined now it's so streamlined now there's no watchstones or anything we have to get we can just run straight there um but uh yeah i uh i'm having a hard hard time just deciding with higher fountain champion uh, well i basically remain in the meta of explosive very totem so okay champion so i've got an old pob if you want one okay it's just okay it popped off in metamorph all right. You do not want Let this POV, mate. <laughs> I've this seen is, clips this. recently. I already have the one. The mods have put up clips on his stream recently, and uh, fuck. I, I forgot how good regen that was. Mobs. Okay, the regen mobs are busted, okay? And it does, doesn't deal well with those, but uh, other, if it's not regen, bro, let me tell you. Yeah, I think that Metamorph had like maybe 43 regen a second. Like flat life region, not percent. <laughs> Mind you. And uh, it, it looked like oh. a struggle. Okay, oh okay. no. Oh no. But dude, yeah, I will say, Zeus, you, you need to just pick one, dude. Don't wait for the yeah. you know, information on the bosses because that's that is a weak play to know. Like, the idea is you guys are supposed to basically be picking what bot, what build, what skill, whatever you think is going to be able to take on a new set of challenges the best not find out what those challenges are and then go this is how i'm supposed to build around it i mean there's some pretty cool rewards like i really want to win one of them like being able to design a unique item for a boss that is pretty cool i'm, I'm okay with doing whatever it takes there like if people want to do like no practice that? on standard then i'm i'm fine with that as long as it would be for first like if if i was going to get second place i would practice on standard uh to make sure that i lock something in but for first i'd be okay with not practicing on standard uh, and no, I've never designed a unique item in PoE. They kind of stopped selling them. Nope. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe it was just earlier times because first few years of my streaming, I had plenty of people being like, yo, oh. I got this unique thing and, um, you know, you want to take mine. And I can just go, I don't have any ideas, no thanks. Actually, yes, that did happen. There was one viewer that offered and I started working on an idea and I was like, it's really hard to make a good idea, and I didn't feel comfortable wasting somebody else's creation. Um, whereas if it's something I win myself, then it's it feels better. Because I feel like if you're doing somebody else's creation, you really need to like have something that's perfect. But yeah, I did get offered once by a viewer to design and you one. did it for another game, right? Yeah, that's I paid for that myself well, as well. So I get yeah, the same so thing. Was that, was that like a positive enough experience yeah. that you felt good about that you want to do it in POE? Yeah, that was it was really fun. So for those that don't know, uh, I designed a uh, unique item in Last Epoch that turns the wolf summon into squirrels and multiplies it, and it ends up being like kind of similar to like the what's the Arkali's Fang? Is that what it's called? Right, the dagger, mm -hmm. right one. Yeah, it ends up being mm -hmm. a similar yeah. playstyle to that, and it's is really fun. And they let me do the entire design process on the stream with my viewers and stuff. I really wonder if TGG would like do that. That would be really fun too. I mean, you could do that, you know, brainstorm, create ideas and yeah. all that, and then send it in. But it sounds like it's it's got to be, you know, like similar to how they've done in the past, which is like lots of back and forths and yeah. an eventual, like coming to a conclusion, which is why I thought the rewards were kind of weird. They're just like, all right, we'll create a unique with you and you put it on this boss and this boss and this boss. Already established bosses that exist right now which is probably going to see you unique in like three to six months time or some shit. It just seems like so delayed. I would yeah. have thought maybe for a future boss One second. is what it would have been. What do you think of my tag? Oh. It's fucking leaves. What the hell is he? The host of the <laughs> podcast? What the hell's going on here? I mean, I was going to take a bathroom is. break at some point soon and I was just going to leave. That's an option. Oh, here we go. Here we I was go. preparing the bottle. They they actually like last epoch devs. They commissioned a uh, a cosplayer to actually create my unique item in real life. So this is what it looks like. So it was it was really wish, cool. Wish someone would fucking send me already made cosplays. Yeah, it's very cool. I, I was very happy with how it turned out. So it's sort of like you know a Viking helmet, but shaped like a squirrel. Is it? What do you mean, yeah, you can. Hmm? Okay, see. Yo. Oh, yeah, I was going to say for your yeah, cosplay mask, I can send you a ready-made one, dude. Like, just some body paint, dude, and a G-string, okay? And just whatever yeah. color the bad guys are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was going to say, what's the look. actual idea behind the body paint, then? But... Fucking, I colors. Know, can I get, a... can I get oh, away with a G-string on Twitch? I think that's a bit too much crack, right? You'll... 
you'll pretty much be able to see the Omega Hall. Wait, isn't Ziz doing a um some sort of like like naked hedgehog mm-hmm. cosplay? Mm-hmm. He's doing Sonic because of his uh subathon that he did. I mean, that... I don't know what his actual plan is, if he's gonna like body paint himself or if he's gonna just wear a blue top or some shit. I imagine he's gonna just lay in a bathtub full of blue food dyes. I, and and, uh... I have a full Sonic outfit. So it's an actual just proper Sonic like kids party outfit? It actually looks like it's the size of a kid, so like 12 to 16, so I think it's going to look ultra scuffed. It's going to be super fucked, because I do not fit in it. The mask is squeezing my head. Um, so, yeah. Is it going to be dead, dead bod Sonic? <laughs> it's going to be the most scuffed thing ever. It's going to be ultra fucked, so we'll see. We'll see how it works. It might actually physically hurt to wear it, but uh, yeah, I have regrets. I have regrets. You'll, you'll one-up me, man. Like, you were saying, oh, it's not going to compare. I think I saw you tweet something about, like, you know, not going to compete with math. Nah, mate, you're going to one-up yeah, me yeah, for sure yeah. with that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you have a six-pack, I have a one-pack. It'll be it'll be something else. Dad bod is really in right now, right? So, yeah. They've been in for a while, mate. Looking at body acceptance. It's it's a hot trend. <laughs> Fat lol. <sighs> Fat lol. Yeah. No, it'll be, um, it'll be interesting. But yeah, um, so Matthew, that's a good shirt. It's a good shirt. Matthew, you mentioned you, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. shirt buddies. Matthew, you you said you didn't like the rewards of the event. Did you say? No, I didn't say I didn't like them. It just okay. seemed a um, bit um, weird that they're being put onto current bosses. Hmm. Like it seems like you know we've already got these bosses. They've already got loot tables. And then this reward comes out, and then knowing how long the item creating process takes, it's like usually a pretty long time oh. co- collaboration with GGG. Like you could see this in three to six months from now, maybe even longer. So, and then it's just retroactively put on bosses that already have come out and exist. I thought it'd be like for future bosses if it was going to be sure. that sort of. Um, I I get design. that, but I do think that I think part of why it's taken so long too is they were like overflowing. With collabs, that's why they stopped doing them as well. Whereas now they're not really doing them anymore. It's only people that have like remaining ones. So maybe they're just gonna like dish these out, do like a voice meeting instead of the normal process, and for players to have a good idea. Like maybe, maybe we'll see some before the next leak. Maybe. At least there's a bigger chance. You have no, than you have no idea with all your, um, you know, lines of connection as to how long this will take. I haven't asked at all. No, I haven't asked. Okay. Um. Steel, what do you feel about the rewards? Okay, so I was really excited. So, I mean, to my chat originally, so I, I'm kind of like, I, I can't tell if it's just because I'm like a GGG simp or something. But my chat yeah. was like, it's like, there's no money. Like, you know, this is not like f- $5 million event, you know, because there's no money, right? My reaction was like, oh my god, I get to design like an Uber Elder unique by game, and the, you know, and then we could like, Designed it with chat, and I was like, my, you know, I was super excited, and maybe maybe it's because I'm a millionaire streamer now. I was about uh, to say it's because it you're a multi-millionaire steal. Yep. Yep. Millionaire streamer taking lost stock sponsorships. Yep. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. Fine. Yeah. Nah, S- Steel's completely fucking out of touch. Okay, he's out of touch. He's a privileged. <laughs> Fucking millionaire streamer, and this is fucking dog shit. Ziz would have done a way better event, and GGG, seriously, they should feel fucking bad, okay? But not get like, are you serious? No, nah, I saw, I saw like, uh, who was it? Exiles tweet. Exile. He basically said that, yeah. right? Yeah, and he was like, "Fuck GGG, what the fuck? No money, dude. Okay. Fucking rage. And I, and I was like, dude, this is so cringe. What is wrong with this guy? He's fucking cooked in the head." Uh, and then every chat was like kind of agreed with him. I'm like, you guys are clowns. What? Okay, you could design a unique item, bro. Like that will be in the game, you know, until P- maybe the, the, eventually the boss gets phased out or is like deleted or something. But whatever. Which is insanely awesome and badass and pog. It's like absolutely. If you had to choose between, okay, like if you had to choose like thirty thousand dollars or design an item that goes to Anub Elder, what would you choose? Everyone here, like, is very different than yeah, most right now, people. You guys, right now. Okay, okay, right maybe right you should right. lower the amount. Maybe you should say 10k. 30k is on the high. End. 20k. 20k. Let's go 20k. 20k, or you get to design an item for Uber Elder. I'm pretty sure you can sell like these uniques if you. Like, obviously, I don't think they'll let you, but you could probably sell it for like a lot. 
So they, they do have a va- like a massive amount of value. <laughs> you, you are still putting that prize money too high, dude. Mr. Out of I, I, I think you don't understand that even if it was three... Everyone's taken 20, 20k. I think if you yeah, went as low as $3,000, people would prefer the money over the design. No way! No, oh, people pay like $9,000 to go to a football game because they want the experience, dude. People are going to pay super high premium amounts to, to do something for something they're passionate about and they love, right? I mean, either that they're, or they're just not true part of Excel fans. Right? Individuals, I mean, sure, yeah. but people right now, yeah. the past few years have been pretty rough on a lot of people financially. So oh, yeah, a lot I mean, of people yeah, are very yeah, happy with money. If you're poor, okay? Uh, don't get me wrong. If you're poor, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Okay, okay. My, my, take, like, my take was... Not the money. Okay, my take was that you could probably sell the bloody thing. Not that you should not take. Yeah, you know, they these have value, right? I was thinking about buying one, bro. I was thinking, I was, I was thinking about offering ten thousand dollars. Be like, yo, man, I was gonna, I was, like, you, you just fucked up. You just then like leaked the. I'm not gonna you'd buy be uh, going as high as twenty or thirty k. <laughs> whoever wins <laughs> needs to play hardball now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I would. Yeah, yeah. It'd just be kind of cringe. I, I was like, oh, if TY TY Killer wins like three, like dog, let me buy one, right? Like you know, like let me buy one, bro. Uh, like basically, that's what I was thinking. I don't think you'd be allowed to sell it, by the way. <coughs> you wouldn't be allowed to. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. How about how about you, you win first and then then you know start? Uh, <laughs> Still made this unique is like like a infinite bleed stacking item that like makes your bleeds like prolif and then also explode <laughs> like you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Call, like, the, Any other the ideas? Rat, the rat claw. The, for the patches. The, what can I call it? The rat claw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I mean, but anyway, anyway, I just want to say, I just want to say, because Exile's take originally was molding, but he did clarify, and I agree that. Obviously, it would have been cool to do both, because you 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 know you don't have to think one or the other. Yeah, right? true. You could buff true. it. You could buff it. True. I yeah. I think the best thing that Pee Wee could do for price pools would be similar to a compendium for Dota, and then they also get to see a direct how much interest there is for something like this. They could easily do like, okay, we're gonna have a cloak. It looks like this, and ten percent, fifty percent goes to the price pool. You can buy this specifically if you want to support racing. That is absolutely what they should do, in my opinion. I don't know, man. Like, you'll end up just having tens of thousands of dollars for killing a fucking boss in PoE. <laughs> it, it honestly seems a bit exorbitant. Like, this, the new unique stuff, like, that, that is very on theme, on brand with a PoE, where you get some creative control and you get to put, you know, leave a mark on the game and do some thinking and all that just fucking you know here's a hundred k in path of exile to you know from the company to win a boss it just it's it seems so not our game i don't know I don't, i'm I'm not in the race so you know who cares about my opinion a lot of people do um but again that oh, wouldn't really, be from yeah. gdd it would be from people watching and how much interest well, there okay. is okay imagine how cool this would be though like i mean see maybe this is me being a streamer andy but Imagine it was there was no Boston standard. You had to do it in league, right? And you had like casting. You had to go in. Well, you, obviously you were kind of forced to do it blind then, right? Because you can't really. I mean, maybe Lighty would do this, but you can't really play in SS uh, in softcore and in hardcore at the same time. Level up the character at the same time. Do it together at the same. Like that'd be kind of take literally twice as long, right? So you know, and then obviously you have the big event with all the you know the blah 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 blah. What this is talking about, and just make it massive and make it like a week long thing. That'd be really cool. That would be really cool. Yeah. I think you could make it, you know, really cool. The the the, the issue here, obviously, and I I I see, I see what Mathel's saying, is that the event's probably gonna be a couple days, right? Realistically, it's gonna be like a two day thing. So maybe it's mm. good that it's not some massive, like crazy thing. So. Yeah, I mean, in general, right? just incentivizing like people being online for forty plus hours or something to That's get the win. It's, it's it's not the same as like regular esports where people like train, practice, and then it's like a couple hour event and it's like a one v one or a five v five or some shit. This is just like man versus challenge, and it can go pretty extreme. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely the downside of adding a massive prize pool to it. People are gonna you know. Yeah, I mean, they just randomly said like five million dollars for whoever wins. Think about, I mean, yeah, you get a bunch of people 
start playing PoE and try hunting the shit out of it. But it would, I, I feel like you, you'd take away from the game because then they start optimizing around esports and they start like re removing RNG and changing the way the game works. And then it's, it's, it's like, I just think it's not the direction that they should hit in. I think it's the opposite of the direction that you want to hit in. I don't think they would do any balance changes either way. Yeah. I mean, if you're That's... optimizing around the game around esports, but like why why to, like, why would it, it suddenly be optimizing around esports? Because you because you it doesn't have to do both. It doesn't have to do both. There's but no reason for that. Do you not understand? If if you were to if you were to start putting massive prize pools, it's like you want your return on your investment. You're gonna literally optimize it to be an esport. There's a very big difference between twenty to forty thousand and five million. Oh yeah, I'm just I was being hyperbolic, right? To, to very. show you what will happen. <laughs> very. Yeah, it's bad. Well, that's the thing. Do take that's a slippery slope. That's what I'm saying. Trying to turn PUE into an esport, which is like it's not. It's an ARPG. But I mean, fuck, man. If they want to just like, like throw money at some shit and just let people, you know, have some RNG race, like fair enough. But and that is exactly but, why, as well, that I suggested having it be crowdfunded because then people who enjoy watching are in full control the more like if people like it then it's clearly a good thing right then clearly it is worth it and if not then the prices are smaller because people don't like watching it as much so it like equalizes itself out perfectly that's why that's the best idea in my opinion i still just never see why money was like really factored in as a thing ggg should ever have done because historically they've put on events and the rewards have been like you play the event for fun basically because it's a fun different experience from path of exile right and then there's Introdu introduced of like micros I and various new items and shit and then um like you can win v various prizes and micros in other events in the future and then someone like zizaran came along and started doing his own side events because they didn't and then he started doing money and then like what what's to say that they should because there's their take has always been have some cool stuff for the game right right so i've had the take on this um, this is not my take, I'm just sort of the mouthpiece here. The take is essentially that these events come once a year at most, right? Whenever a new boss releases. And they're supposed to, they feel, or at least they should feel, like the big boss event. Like the big new thing, never before seen, boss that no one's done before. You know, there's usually a lot of hype around it, right? So these should feel like the biggest event of the year. Not the gauntlet, not like some other, you know, not some like flashback event. This once a year sort of big event. Right, so that's the that's the take, right? That that it should just be enhanced to be a bigger event because of that shit, right? Yeah, I mean, mean, whether or not I agree with that, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy with the with the prices. By the way, I'm extremely yeah. happy. So that's, that's I, sort of the POV I, of some of the more serious races. I do think the prizes are really exciting, but even now that I have money, I think money's always exciting, like. And, and just like winning cool things as well, like, you know, they have monetary value. I remember that's part of what got me into racing was the initial race they did. It was like a, what, one or $3,000 Alienware lap up. And I was like, fuck, if I win that, I can sell it for like $3,000. That's so much money. That's awesome. In my opinion, money always makes things more exciting and fun, more fun to watch too. And I didn't have a chance to win that. I just thought it was exciting yeah, to participate. Take ninja. Yeah, a ninja take, good take. Pee-wee's just become too, like, speaking as someone who's monetized it for their entire life, it's become <laughs> too monetized. It's, um, you know, like, it should be for the love of the game, for wanting to win. I remember when I did my world first at Siri, right? Like, I, I did it because I wanted to be the first, and I got a fucking hat micro, and that was it. And it was more than good enough. First, yes, that's all I needed. Like, now... You can have the take of, yep, yeah, money it would have been great to add to it. Like, why not some money? Great. Money, cool. But the take of this instead of money, or why isn't there also money? That's, sure. that's reaching, I think. How much more pog would it be if you added, like, first person to kill, awakening it gets 100k, right? Would have made it, like, like how much more exciting does it then become to watch? Because it was still exciting as fuck to see the sure. first HTSF Awakening kills. Other than they like did have money. Out. There was like a forty, sixty thousand dollar total price pool there. Yeah. Okay. Well, so uh, they do this, do the same thing with the new bosses, right? I mean, that's what I'm saying. I wonder how much more pog does it make it? Because like, that's the question you need to ask yourself. And that's are they going to do that? Because if, if it's if, if it makes it like ten percent more exciting, is it worth? I mean, fuck that. They're, they're rich as fuck, man. I think it's a lot more Maybe exciting. They, I mean. And I could just put, I mean, I don't know about a lot more, but like, it's definitely like, oh, there's actual money on the line. It's like a boxing match if you, if you're a bit, you know. Okay, but it, it becomes part of the story, right? Especially 
but it makes you root for the underdog. Like if somebody's already a student or something, or it like doesn't have a lot of money, mm. maybe trying to make it as a full time streamer and they win like 10, 20, 30 K. That's like partially life changing money that can like kickstart something new for that person and makes it exciting to be part yeah. of that story. So they should do it like this. They should just do the cool, awesome rewards, like the designer item. And then, like, nobody really gives a fuck, but just add in, like, whatever. It's like, they, they got 10 cent money, you know? Just add in the 100k for the guy who kills the boss first. Yeah. You know? And then that just, that, then it gives you the pog factor and the, you know, just add in it, just chuck it in, you know? And, but no one really cares, except for the people who do care. But, like, that's not the point. I could see that. Yes, that is how, that. That is how that works. It'd be much more exciting, I think, sure. But I just say, I don't think anyone should expect money out of these or be offended that there isn't money. But, like, it'd for sure, like, put a lot more pressure on the person doing it. And then let's say they fuck up just all these memes of lost 100k and shit like that. I mean, that'd be <laughs> fun as fuck, right? <laughs> like, I mean, $100,000 gonna... mistake and all that. Would you rather they give, like, uh, I don't know, $60,000 to Shroud, or would you rather they give $60,000 to the guy who kills Awaken at first? I'm making it first. Like, Who the fuck cares what we'd rather? It's about they're getting back on I their know, investment saying, of, of like marketing. They gave I'm him 60k for marketing. marketing. I'm saying just of marketing, I, you might actually get more viewership on the kill if there was like people knew there was money on the line, and maybe it okay, great. There's more did. viewership of someone fucking getting the last hit on Awakener. How does that translate into the same um, return exposure from like yeah. a new streamer that doesn't play the game? Yeah. Pay Shroud and also then pay that Awakener. Ah, so so just f fish another 60k out of your ass. Just, I'm just already, 60k yeah. no, for everyone, dude. That's not Every fair. streamer on okay. the platform, 60k, take over Pay Twitch. Yeah. That's on not the fair. I already have a solution for that. Expansion. That's already solved. That problem is already solved. What like, do you mean? But that, that problem, like, it's yep. not like just taking money from their own coffers. They can just sell one MTX for the sole purpose of raising money for the price pool. So that's already a solved problem. Well, they lose profit by them by that because they could sell an MTX, which they just get all the profit for, right? So yeah. they lose. No, no, because that. people will specifically buy things to support things. You see that with the compendium yeah, and Dota too. Have, if you people have like a limited amount of money spent, if they spend it on that thing, then they might buy less MTX. Like absolutely, that's how they'll think. Like absolutely, they will not be like, oh, this is just free money. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting it's either not, way. It's not even a thing. To be fair, it's like, uh, regardless of... hypotheticals. Yeah. But regardless, if you, like, care a lot if it's money in the price pool or not, I'm very excited we're getting an event at all. It's not like they have to do one. And th these are really... These are the coolest non-monetary prices they could do. Like, regardless if you like and care about money or not. Like, there are some very cool prices. And it's not even just for, like, the first person to do it. Like, there are very, very cool prices here. So, we gotta give them props yeah. for that, regardless of where what side you're on. To be fair. Well, that was my viewpoint. Uh, that was my viewpoint. I was like, yeah, you know, they don't even usually yeah. do an event. Okay, now there is an event. Oh, shit. And there's prizes of this stuff. And then it's like, oh, but they did an event. And it wasn't money. Sag. Like, what the fuck kind of take is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, to be fair, though, that's also very Path of Exile. Like, like Path of Exile viewers and stuff. That's very often we end up with community takes, which is they want their cake and they want to eat it, too. That's not exactly a new thing. Just smell the cake. It's good enough. Um, they they just posted. I'm gonna bring it up on stream. I can link it in the group combo as well. There's a new bow that just Looks got revealed. Um, let me just busted. Is it okay? All right, I'm gonna hard. Five was this? I'm gonna put it in the middle of the stream. Um, it is 151 increased physical damage. 20 attack speed lose all frenzy charges on reaching max frenzy charges to make the next bow attack you fire fire that many arrows and then it's crit multi while you're frenzy charges and chance to gain frenzy charges for each enemy you hit with a critical strike very interesting i mean that sound like without even having to think about it that sounds like there's gonna be some insane shit happening with it <laughs> Depends on the damage of the bow, right? It's got decent damage. It's on there. It's like a huge citadel, so it doesn't need much flat fears. It's just got percent, so yeah, it's decent. Yeah. That's interesting. That's an interesting item. What could you shotgun with that? What could you what could you shotgun? 
like with a billion projectiles. Just like Pariah. giga slam one guy. I mean, I think this is exactly oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. why they just then changed Void Fletcher, because otherwise, um, that would have uh, been done. <laughs> it's interesting. But it, it looks like Magic. a pretty cool item. I, I honestly feel like they've been doing better and better on doing more exciting, like more exciting items again. Because I feel like for a while we were getting a lot of items that weren't that good, but now they... They're like really focusing on like giving us some more chase items, some like cool interactions, and they're they're getting better and better at that again. So that's that's pretty cool. This does look like it like doesn't necessarily have to be like a two C item. Like it could actually end up being pretty meta. Yeah. Oh wait, till they the battle comes hard. out. Yeah, man, you won't play it anyway, dude. It's not meta enough. I mean, I did play softcore one time. You know, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and what did you play? Like fucking Lancing Steel Paradoxica just Yeah? <laughs> What's wrong with that? That is definitely off meta for me, okay. For you Yeah. I don't know. It's pretty strong. DB shit. existed that league, okay. You give you know, at least you know, okay. True. <laughs> True, you could have played DD. Um, should have should have done like a cast on crit detonate yeah just get a different feel for <laughs> detonate instead of like mm. the soyest version possible um we can we can move on to talking seeing as we already brushed on builds we can start talking about starter builds and obviously there was some disappointment that there were new no new skill gems and stuff but uh yeah quinn what are, what are you starting the league with you can take okay. a yeah I was I was thinking about um well I mean I know we just pick the new skill right like that's normally what I do I said I look at the new skills and I pick the cool one that looks the most patchiest uh that didn't that wasn't an option so then I was like okay what have they done bows and spells um and I put in a few builds and I I, I tested out arc um hits arc ignite I tested out uh poison BB occultus and then uh, randomly, Tim was like, should try Hexblast. Um, mm. and, they, and I was like, okay. And then, the, dude, Hexblast is fucking insane, bro. Hexblast is fucking insane. Like, no gear, naked, it's like hitting 1.2 mil. No, 1.2 mil per Hexblast. Yep. Okay, with gear, like, easy over 2 mil. Big dick shocks so, on bosses. I think Hexblast always had the problem that it always looks amazing in Path of Building and features really good damage, but actually playing it, which I think if Mathil comes back, um, he can talk about it a little bit, but I think Hexblast felt really bad to play. Well, I tested the mechanic out. Mm -hmm. um, I, like, I tested I tested out Hexblast because I'd never played it before. Um, and it didn't feel too bad, bro. Like, I don't know, you just, like, curse. And, like, you could wait, like, a second and then just right-click and then just goes boom and explodes. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I play worse builds. I play if I can hit That's the two true. mil per cast, bro. That's true. Like, dude. And on top of that, if you're going full crit, and because Hex Plus is basically turns you into elementalist, right? You get like you get the free uh, shock, you get the free uh, freeze, you get the free ignite, which I don't really care about. But the fact is, you get guaranteed shocks, guaranteed, uh, you know, fucking corpse explosion, chills out the wazoo. I mean, I don't know. Surely it can't be bad, bro. Mathel, you played Hex Plus, right? Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Speaking as someone that like has seen, watched plenty of Quinn, and um, knows how he plays, what he plays, that sort of thing, and then being someone that has played just about everything myself, and knowing how a lot of the things function, watching him like discover shit and try stuff out is just fucking hilarious. Because um, I, well, I'm not. No, it's not in a bad way like that, Quinn. Don't take okay, offense or okay. anything. It's like it's like I, you know, you're going okay. How how would this work, and how's that going to function? And I'm just like sitting there, full well knowing what it's what it's going to be like, or what the end result in this thing might be. So if you're like going down the route of like, okay, arc self hit, because I told you the other day, I was like, you're going to fucking just die and do nothing in SSFHC with that, right? When I hosted you, I was like, you said you asked something about it. I was like, eh, I don't know. So watching like a lot of that from my perspective, it's um, just uh, it's just a little bit funny knowing the end result and then seeing you try and you know come to some sort of conclusions. And ultimately, you're not going to know until you play it. Like you can check the POBs, you can look at the numbers, um, and you won't know how it feels. Hex Blast, yes, it's going to have bigger numbers. The Ignite version isn't bad. It plays all right. It's fairly smooth. It lacked a bit a, of damage, so that's going to be right, better. 
he need, they, they didn't need it, there. but um, but it, it helps in the end. It helps in the end, I think. You don't need it. I think I did one. I think the Ignite one I did was on Zizz's Gauntlet, so it was like the mm -hmm. hardest version possible. Uh, SSF, HC, Hex Blast. So, Wait, Hex Blast? Well. Wait, you did Hex Blast on Gauntlet? Wait, how far did you make it, bro? Ignite Gauntlet. That was back when um, Archmage wasn't nerfed yet. Yeah. So it's not... But it'll probably be brought up to about the same level. And it'll maybe do, like, I don't know, on relatively okay gear now. About a million Ignite DPS, probably. Uh, whereas self hit when it first came out, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try that skill, and I tried it to start with. It was a pretty miserable experience, <laughs> like <laughs> without oh, without shit, proper bro. gear and being having the ability to fix everything, you know, on the fly and going, okay, I need more car speed, I'll get more car speed, I need tankiness, I'll get tankiness, whatever. It ended up being kind of just clumsy and annoying. Uh, with much bigger numbers now, and you can like fix everything now. I mean, I think you sh it's still probably worth a shot by all means if you like what it looks like, and you're also a bit more tenacious in trying to fix your builds than I am. You know, you go, okay, mm. this isn't necessarily feeling that good. Let's find a work around it, and I'm going to commit another few days into it. Whereas I'm usually like, uh, this, this is fizzling. I'm going to think about something else. Hex blast. I mean, with bigger numbers, it'll probably feel okay, but um. Ultimately, I mean, if... you're going to have problems to fix, and it's going to be up to whether you can fix them. It, it's not going to start out smooth, and it won't be like super buttery and against a lot of different like mobs coming at you, mechanics and all that. That's good. Well, I just think it's going to be like it's going to do fat chills, right, and yeah. freeze them, and and it's going to do shit like that. And so maybe it'll be like, and then I might have like a big and feeble, you know, then I'll be pretty tanky. Mate, if you're up to the challenge, I'd love to see you take it on. Um, by all means, it'd be very fun. I'm going to. Uh, I'm nice. doing it. Okay. Committing. Okay. Committing. Okay. Deal me. It's, it's. I'd say the biggest concern is whether or not the playstyle is going to be like enjoyable. Yeah, we'll see. He's been able and, to and play a lot of. And you've done some unenjoyable playstyles, yeah. so it's probably not that much of a factor for you. Yeah. You just be like, oh, cool, dude, I'm fucking rain. <laughs> oh, you know, this is this is pog, <laughs> as opposed to just like damaging yourself every time you attack, and then having to be inside the boss's asshole to do damage, and fucking still doing nothing with it. <laughs> you know? Okay, dude. Bone right, chatter is there's, legit. there's been a few weak bone chatter oh, builds, all right. Okay, you know bro. That. I have not played bone chatter. And ages, do you know how insane it is now, bro? Like, he is nuts now with the changes that Tell me how like, insane it is. Hey, dude, the amount of like, you can have infinity recovery, like, I mean, infinity recovery. You will out recover, you could just bone shatter to infinity stacks, and you will never die with the new fucking life recovery regain bullshit, with the, especially with the new ring affixes. Like, I absolutely want to go bone shatter, but people have still got bone shatter PTSD, and I don't even know why. <laughs> and they were just like, don't do, don't do bone don't? shatter, bro. And I'm like, you don't have bone shatter PTSD. Like, so I what if, it, if it's better? Let's say it's twice as good now. The fact that you've played like 80% of the past two years of Path of Exile's Bone Shatter doesn't make you oh, think no, I want to do something different. And I didn't even play it last league at all. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, this is great. Yeah, that's I, that's I, a I, meme. That's a meme that people exaggerate how much Bone Shatter I've played. I played Bone Shatter like three times, bro. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, for like two yeah, weeks like, each like, time. Bad, like, yeah, three times, you know? Yeah, they exaggerate, yeah. I never played yeah, ED. Sure, what's your, what's actually your ascendancy spread for the past like fucking few years, uh, Steel? Like percentage of oh. ascendancies. I actually change build all the time. Just you know, whenever the meta changes. So I was a summoner cuck for a bit. Then I was a blade cuck for a bit. And yes, then I'm saying I... you've played Gladiator. You've played Necromancer. Do you know what the other ascendancies <laughs> do? <laughs> Champion, right? Champion fortifies, you know that one. Trickster? Sometimes? <laughs> Did you play Trickster? No, you played you know? Sabo. Yeah, I played DD. That's, yeah, <laughs> see? I played DD, like, a couple of leagues in a row, yeah. There you That's go. necro, though. And Inquisitor was OP. Inquisitor was Inquisitor OP. Inquisitor was fun. Still is right now. Yeah. Yeah, see? There's, like, Here, four. Steel, t tell us a little bit. What, what are you starting with? Because you got bullied out of um, a build by your chat, right? I mean, chat always going to bully. You don't yeah. know what to play, right? Yeah, because, you know, I'm always going to play the meta because I am meta. So, you know, <clears throat> you know, but anyway. Yeah. Bro. Whatever build I play, doesn't matter what build it is, I'm going to fall back. So it doesn't really matter. I don't even really care about the damage delivery mechanism. 
they didn't nerf defense. So the most important thing, and the most important thing to keep in mind when it comes to the meta, is the holy trinity of defense. Deter See, Quinn leaves. He doesn't want to hear this. This is too good. So determination, grace. He's, he's banner, writing it down. Suppression. Oh, he's getting his notepad. So yeah, anyway, any build I play is going to have that like holy trinity, you know, armor, mm -hmm. armor evasion, spell suppression, and then on top of that, you can add defensive layers. But as long as you got that, I think, yeah, I think the build's going to be so good. You're so saying looking... the build, the overarching build, is a pile of defense, <laughs> and then it doesn't matter what the delivery system beyond that is. You That's, just right that really at the end of the day. But what are you playing? It, yeah. Um, <laughs> you're, not, you're not just playing so, defense. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing defense. So it goes back to <laughs> yeah, it goes back to kind of what Matthew was saying. Like, do you do you really commit to this event for the first few days, no matter what, right? Do you commit? Because if I'm committing, seismic trap, right? It's still probably going to be insane. You know, maybe it's getting. I, I'm predicting about a thirty percent damage nerf because of the AOE change. They the wording made it sound like it's still going to give you more damage. Like they just wanted to lessen the effect of it. So I think it's still going to have good damage. But then that's where the you, obvious, like, you know. Sorry, where what? are you pulling 30% from? <laughs> like, it sounds like you just went, all right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a number, 30. <laughs> I, kind of. I agree with Methel so, here. I have PTSD from the Blade Blast change. As in, what? like, you think it might be completely dumpstered. I think it might be completely dumpstered because, like, Blade Blast got nerfed. And on my Blade Blast build, I have Ink AoE and Intensify. And the helmet and Sean, and the 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 AOE is like, it's like tiny, like it, there's no to, overlap. To be clear, the, to be clear, they buff the AOE of the actual. Yeah, area they're making the overlaps the worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the overlaps, like especially, imagine if like the AOE now even pushes it away further apart, so you're getting just one seismic hitting something. That's fine because his. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? One seismic? You mean one? Zero overlap. One. One. One pulse. Like of the one, one pulse is fine. Okay. The the mass the mass on this is if you get one average hit, that's still enough. Hmm? Because it's, it's math, right? But anyway, if you're getting one hit, the the real tricky part is if you're getting a dead zone, which I think is what this is talking about. Yeah. If you're getting um if you're getting massive dead zones, that's bricked. But the based on the wording of it, okay. So here's the thing, right? Seismic with zero AOE, so without the ascendancy on side uh, on um on sab is still really good right yeah and if aoe gives you more overlap still which is the wording that they use in the patch notes i think it's going to be totally fine because they, they mentioned they want to keep that they specifically said they want to keep the overlapping mechanic they want aoe to buff your damage so they're just making it spread instead of completely get because you can actually get five overlaps on seismic with enough aoe apparently which I think that's the mechanic they're trying to remove because when you got five waves hitting the same target, it's ridiculous. You'll, you'll anyone who's played Seismic on Maven will know it's like ridiculous, right? On the yeah. on the brain yeah, specifically, yeah. it is so. Yeah, so I think I think with one pulse minimum, like if you're hitting one, it's fine. If you if you're still getting a decent amount of overlap though, it's gonna be totally good. Like real anyway. So that's in my what opinion, are you saying, that's, that's the obvious. Doing? No, <laughs> because <laughs> because it's seismic trap. I don't want to do seismic necessarily, just because it's that, in my opinion, really safe, good pick. I, I wanted to do the Haro Phoenix Plus Arrow build. I haven't played it before, and I know Mathel said if you play a totem build once, you you know I haven't played a totem build Mathel for like seven years because one time I played. Mm -hmm. you know, remember searing bond totems? <laughs> that was meta. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I played it in an event. And I, I rage quit. I just suicided my character, and I said, never playing totems again. So I never really did. So I haven't played totems yeah. properly for like seven years, and even then, I didn't really play it. So I this mean, you is missed like out a... on a lot of changes to make them more enjoyable. So yeah, they, yeah, I they aren't the same as what you remember. Yeah, it should yeah. be pretty fun. And honestly, that also, is important. You can, you can fit a searing bond totem into your build right now. By <laughs> True. The way. I, I, I'm not using searing bond. Too much PTSD. Seven years ago, rage quitting. But yeah, no, um, do I do the thing that's new and I haven't done before and it could suck? <laughs> and there's 500 videos about why Explosive Arrow will and will not suck. 
Or do I do the thing that I think is safe as hell and it's going to maybe get me a, a dub? Like, what if, I don't but know. what if it isn't in the end? Like, you do commit to the seismic and it isn't that good. Do you have a fallback on the saboteur? So the the play there is Gucci. He's going to do a, a run on Maven before the... Well, as the league starts. And then it'll be obvious, right? So the fallback, oh. I guess, would just be Hierophant. The fallback, I guess, is just Hierophant. I mean, it's it, looks, it looks really fun to play as well. Like, I've been, like, doing practice with it, and it is, it's pretty fun. And you have so much placement speed on the Hierophant. Yeah, I, I Are you going Explosive Arrow Ignite, or are you going Explosive Arrow Hit? It used to Please. be Hit, but the Ignite Ignite's the one that got buffed, so Ignite. Yeah, because I'm, well, I'm saying ignite. I played Ignite, I played Ignite, and, bro, it's fucking insane. Like, you just put down a totem, bro? Uh, I'm playing Seismic. Shoots off. <laughs> Abandon I, ship. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> It's it got the Quinn seal of approval. Bro, I'm telling you, three screens. You'll blow up like three screens at a time. You put down one thing and it's like... And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. Like the whole screens are just blown up and it's prolifying everywhere, yeah. bro. Shit. It's, shit gonna, it's gonna ramp, right? Play. It's gonna ramp. Oh, it, ran, it ramps, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm I, I, must admit, I almost want to play it. Like you guys are saying, talking about how it's oh, like, no. Dude, I fucking love that build. I fucking love that. Oh, but though, no. they, they made it shit, though, with the 20 arrow cap. Which is kind of cringe. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think it looks solid. I think you should just literally play what you think you're gonna have fun with, and you, like, because it's not like you're choosing between uncompetitive builds anyway. Like, you're already choosing between very competitive builds. Like, both could be I mean, the winner. My, my logic is this: this guy, right, on YouTube, he released like a guide for champion and Hierophant, and I was thinking, just blame them if the build sucks, right? <laughs> that works. That works. I'm gonna blame yeah, Sai so. if it sucks. That's what I did last time. Yeah. Mathel, what about you? What is your league starter? Um, I'm going a risky play and actually self-casting something. Um, and and not in a good perspective either. I'm gonna go Dead Eye, Ice Spear. So self-cast Ice Spear. Um, and. Uh, it's a it's pretty jank play style, so we have to slot in some Eye of Winter as well for clear. But it's just going to be a rough start, basically. Are you doing it leash? Uh, you don't... No, just casting. Just fucking echo and shit like that. Uh, I've done a, you know, I was originally thinking I'd do some sort of... Or I, I wanted to try out a cultist and be like a, a Blade Vortexer and maybe some self-cast Ice Spear as a test on that as well blade vortex kind of sucks early on still like you can double its damage right now and uh it doesn't get like almost any almost none of the self cards get any extra damage at level one mm -hmm. let's just be clear for the record so if you're going in self cast and expecting these massive buffs you're not getting them till later um so blade vortex had no real buffs early on and uh the area just kind of sucks and the playstyle kind of sucks when you have to constantly like try and upkeep your casts and get duration and all this so instead i um tried out some ice spear and i went on the occultist felt great so by level 60 feels pretty good and uh, it will be buffed by that point i want to take it in more of a dead eye perspective and uh start out just sucking for like 30 levels and then hopefully it picks up and i become a build and uh yeah that's that's definitely what's gonna win me the fucking prize on ssfhc boss kill I would love to see you do this as a hardcore boss kill. I think it would be great. Um, I mean, that... What are you going to see? You're not going to see anything if you just watch me do that. Like, the boss will be dead day two. I'll fucking get to tier nine's day seven and then just, like, <laughs> die because i got a shit build. Like, what are you going to see? It'll be, it'll be fun mean. to see the build, though. Like, you always, like, you just, you have so many builds. Like, you do more builds than anyone. It's great to watch. Very, very mm -hmm. exciting. Well, Mathel. Yeah. It says that you were saying like that fucking abilities, like most abilities gain no damage, low level. Like mm. the effectiveness of added damage on like arc is going up yeah. by a fuck ton, right? Yeah. So then if, if you're doing like lightning damage added once, it's mm -hmm. going to do a fuck ton more damage, right? I mean, I'm hope I'm, I'm banking yeah. on doing more yeah, damage. That's, I'm going to level with that. No, that's the um, okay, cool. brunt of the change early on. But that's if you can get like that extra damage, which, you know, you can't reliably get. And it's not that much anyway. Like, Ark's got, I don't remember what Ark's got, like, 100% and goes up to, like, 180 like or something. To 100, it's going from 90 to 130, I think. Maybe I'm right. cooked, though. 
So you might still like have to use added lightning, which is slightly nerfed, and then um, it doesn't get that much bigger. In the, if you're going Arc Ignite, for example, like if that's part of your plan, I don't I'm think that's with any Arc. better. That's how I can do Hex Blast. Hex Blast. Right. All right. Nah, man, that's fine. You can do that. Like that's just something until yeah. then. But like I said, you won't feel much of a damage buff early on because the gem itself doesn't get any of its damage buff until later in levels. It's just the effectiveness, and you get low effectiveness early on. So, like, it'll help if you. Can oh, wait, get does some it, of is that. it not static? Is the effectiveness not static? I don't know, not a spell cook. Like I thought, it was it was static effectiveness. No, that's fine. That's what I'm saying. That's you'll okay, get 130 okay, right, added no. at all times, but you won't see the 50 yeah, percent yeah. more until late again. Yeah. So early on, you hardly feel any difference, mate. You're well, picking it's a up pretty bad, I mean, Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, yeah, it's it's like the the I mean, whatever, dude. I mean, the point is, it's gonna fucking own, bro. I'm gonna fucking level up with Arc. <laughs> mate, Boy, I'm sorry, and that be... up is gonna be huge, okay? Because yeah. I'm I'm gonna yeah. be rolling with added lining and with two lining ones at the same time, bro. And you're gonna be what hex blast at twenty eight? Uh, well, hex blast whenever Arc is shit, because because I, I like Arc. But then, so that I'll stay on arc as long as I can, and then I'll switch to X plus right. when, whenever I like. Whenever the damage is still could down. actually just be the main build if you're feeling it. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's an occultist, so yeah. It's yeah, an the only way that I works would, is if you end to, up yeah. converting. <laughs> Wait, are you are you yeah. leveling occultist arc self cast non ignite? Yeah, 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 yeah. Until like I'm you, leveling you get to hex blast. To, yeah, to like 30 or 40 or, I don't know, just tell me whenever Ark feels shit and then I'll just pick all the, the Doom nodes. Yeah, he'll get he'll get Hex Blast at 28, I think it is, and cast it once and he'll be like, oh, wow, that's way better than Ark and stop doing Ark. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm excited to get clips and stuff. I'm excited. What? Clips. Clips, yeah. Fuck are you implying by that? What? Clips of what? Like, I what? always get clips of how Video others are doing it. Let me start. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, Quinn just okay. like yeah, okay. coming up to Oak. Actually, it will be later. It'll be like more like coming up to Dominus, one shotting with Hex Blast, and he's like, I'm owning, bro. I'm owning. See, chat? Yeah. See? And you grab the microphone and you yell at chat because it's so fucking strong. Okay, good shit. Good shit. All right. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Bro. For my league starter, I honestly really, really wanted to play Spark. I think Spark is like the build I'm the most excited about this league. I made like an Inquisitor, but it's just, I think it was Quantrick that was like, you really want to self cast this on the new bosses? And I'm like, no, I don't. So I'm probably doing a uh, Hierophant, but still, I really want to play Spark as well. But uh, yeah, Explosive Arrow, and then a hard choice between Hierophant and Champion. Obviously, Champion is like, there's, very little hit damage that can kill you, and then you insta vaporize to degens. I'm just a little bit worried you that, should... huh? You should definitely play champion. Okay, I got the hierophant. You got the champion. I mean, this is how this works, right? You we gotta communicate. You know, can't play the same builds. Is it's like me and Quinn wearing the same shirt. You know, we should have coordinated that. It's like you know. That's badass. I uh, <laughs> I, I the thing is, I feel like there's so many pros and cons to both builds. Like the the effect of HP on hierophant does scare me a little bit. Especially because yeah, it's yeah, a new yeah, boss. Yeah. Like if, it's... if if he's already committed to um, here often, then I think you should do the other one. Just no, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever I feel no, like no, no, no. is the best. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and oh, Hierophant yeah. comes online faster, and I don't think the boss skill race is going to be very long. Like, if I thought it was going to be a four or five day race, I would do champion hands down. Because I feel like champion takes longer to come online. Uh, but I think it'll be done maybe on the second session, and Hierophant does come online faster. A hard choice. Either way, they all look like very strong builds. Um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Before we uh before we stop talking about builds, this was uh a lot of people were like, ooh, bow league. Bows are getting so much buffs. Is there any like bow builds you guys have looked at or be excited about? Mathel, you look at a shit ton of builds. Anything in particular? Uh I mean I put in uh, Gladiator Bleed Bow as a starter because it should be respectable. It goes up to about a million DPS without almost any investment, just a decent bow. Um, so that's fine. And the only buff, you know, the buffs there are basically just the Fizz bows themselves get a bit stronger. Um, other than that, I mean, it's still, it's just such a bad starter playstyle that it's hard to really yeah. encourage anyone to like 
pick up ice shot lining arrow or whatever because um like on day one because it's still going to be gear reliant yeah. and your single target's still going to kind of suck until you ultimately get to the place where you need to be which is you know like level 80 and good fucking uh well-rounded damage gear until then it's still going to be pretty flimsy sure. i think if you're playing softcore and you don't care too much about like you know the best build or anything picking up or any random bow build and you'll get there it's fine it's not a big deal but for like the end game betas and stuff you're going to need some pretty finely tuned gear i mean i just then played scourge arrow as elemental and that went pretty damn well it was basically my build of the league um and you could do that this league you know with the right gear and it'll be better and any build like that should be a bit better um but it's still pretty like pigeonholed into a few single targets unfortunately the new bow might be something to play around with for single targets that looks like it um could change that yeah that looks very interesting um deal any special take on like bow builds right well i mean i'll be kind of <sighs> I love bow builds for mapping. I hate them for bossing because mm. whenever I play a bow build, especially that barrage play style, so obviously this is going to come... Like, Scourge has actually felt okay, right, to be fair. It depends on your, on your skill, but a lot of um, a lot of endgame bow builds I look into, LA, Ice Shot, etc., they go for barrage, and I really do not like point-blank barraging mobs unless they die, right, unless they die instantly. So I feel like if you don't hit four to five million single target, which, to be fair, you probably... Yeah, these good bow builds do hit that, but I feel like if you're not hitting four to five mil single target, it feels really sketchy. Like, I really don't like it. So, I mean, I reckon endgame gear, bow's going to be sick. Sada, like Methel said, uh, it's probably going to be a bit cringe with, like, barraging, trying to kill stuff that you don't know what it does. Like, ugh. Yeah. I mean, the other problem is it, does, it never feels reliable either. Unless you've got that billions of DPS or some shit, if you're, like, stuck in this sort of no man's land uh, of just in between blowing up a boss and then having to, like rely on two sets of flasks two rounds of flasks and the right positioning and all that you yeah. could just end up yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it sometimes just feels really bad whereas an ignite or some shit like that it's always just consistent it's like you're in there you apply and you just focus on mechanics and shit and it's doing the damage yeah, yeah. like i said like toxic rain i like bleed bow just as those hit like i shot barrage builds like it's hard to scale Ben, any uh any yeah. input on uh bow builds any interest uh, wait, they didn't nerf the rat totem, right? Or the ballista totem support thing, right? Because they, cause they buffed bows and they proportionally nerfed the other ballista shit, right? But they didn't nerf the one where you specifically choose the ability. Mm, oh, look. So. Which, which, which means it's insane. So you could pretty much, I don't know, I was thinking like, fuck, that means I could go champion and do any fizz bow shit and just go mm. impale. And then it would be nuts. Yeah. Like, and you'd be tanked. Okay. But then I was like, fuck, it's kind of pussy and boring. Uh, but you know, you pretty much you go any sort of you put like any uh, bow ability on a totem, because it because they buffed bows and they didn't nerf that the yep. you know the range attack totem or the ballista totem, and yeah, they're, they're all gonna be pretty fucking good. Mm -hmm. So that's like, I mean, I was thinking about doing that, but I was like, ah, it's like it's it's just like it'll be kind of like uh, it'll just be kind of pussy, right? So then I was like, the hand casting would be better. But you know, I think anyone, yeah, I mean, it's definitely the I, the I was gonna do bow, hundred percent, I'll be doing like probably champion uh, type thing with a totem. That just like just shoot stuff. Hmm. I mean, explosive arrow basically is a is that not the pussy thing you're talking about? Or oh, yeah, does well, it have its own thing because it's ignite. Yeah, but it's kind of well, explosive arrow's pockets so though. I love the mechanic. I love the it's super satisfying. Well, it used to be ultra satisfying because you used to be able to have the totems out, hmm. and then every stack of the explosive arrow in them it would give you like a bigger multiplier on the element. So you could like have your you put all your totems out and be like pra, 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 shooting. Put a bunch of arrows and then on top of that you'd have your own barrage set up and you'd be like going brruh, 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 and and they'd be firing like 100 arrows into them making these huge multipliers so it was like you could really ramp which that was fucking cool whereas now it's kind of like you just put the totems down and just run around in circles and it's it's not as cool as it used to be because they nerfed the uh explosive arrow to only have 20 stacks max i mean pretty much any bow build right now can and probably should lean heavily on its ballistas so it's still a very um, active play style in that like you're doing all of your own attacking and then all of your totems are like helping out and doing plenty of extra damage so you'd still get that satisfaction if you just did a bow build i mean even yeah a, a pure impale sort of 
fizz thing. It'll be fun, man. Like, if, you know, you need a good win after um, a few losses, if you if it ever comes to that, that's... that's 100%. Amazing. If my, sure. my Hicks Plus thing is sucking and it's trash and then I just die to some random shit, I'm going to... my Probably my second build will probably be some sort of range attack totem, like, bow build. Cool. Awesome. And then after that, it'll probably be a bunch of build. Okay. So you <laughs> love that skill. Um, well, as the last topic, we are getting close to two hours. I try not to have them too much over that. But as the last topic, let's talk a little bit about Arch Nemesis. We haven't really talked on that. How do you guys feel about the league mechanic, Steel Mage? Is this like, does it look really exciting to you? Like, tell us a little bit about it. All right. Well, I feel like a lot of people are thinking it's a bit of an air league, and maybe it is, but I'm not the most five head person so i i don't mind a mechanic like this i think it reminds me of expedition complexity in that so it reminds me of metamorph obviously in the uh, uh but the actual like layers of complexity there are just simply um so there's, there's, there's three main layers that i like about it you've got the um order in which you put the rewards in for those of you who don't know you put the unique uh unique like I, i've actually started calling them organs i mean what are you guys calling them the un I haven't talked about it. I have barely talked about the league mechanic and almost keep forgetting that it exists because I'm so excited about everything else. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually, I am actually kind of like it. But anyway, well, I'll just call them recipe token. We'll call them tokens, right? So you put one token in the, in, in the first slot. That's going to give you... Uh, that's going to buff every other Nemesis mob that you do because you get four in a map, right? Well, up to four in a map. <laughs> so you, the order matters, right? So that's the first layer of complexity. The second layer of complexity is the recipes. And so there are certain combinations that you can do that will award new tokens. And then obviously there are certain things you can put together to make a, to get a, a certain reward. All right. So there's the recipe system. So I reckon calling it now, hopefully I'm right, that there's going to be like a six link recipe for these organs. I wouldn't be all tokens, right? I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. So that might be a potential way to get a six thing. I guess we'll see tomorrow if they, that PUEDB, the, um, the recipes well, i'm not sure if that'll get data mined or not usually and anyway yeah there's like four or five tiers of tokens right so there's like multiple tiers of tokens multiple reward tiers and then the um last thing is obviously how they interact with each other so certain tokens will modify the you know the rewards right so we, they showed this in the demo one of them was simply converts all current uh converts all rewards to currency so there could be one for uniques there could be some other five head stuff going on so I'm I'm very happy with that layer of complexity. Like yeah. that's simple, but you know it's got it's got that it's got a little bit of juice, which I like. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm excited for it, but I think I'm maybe the only one who gives a shit. <laughs> I like simple link mechanics. I don't know. I'm a fan of it. Yo, <laughs> can I completely derail the conversation entirely? Um, All right. Sure. Talk about the fact that you said six link, six link recipe. And then talk about the fact that like I don't know. I watched the Chris Wilson podcast with Ziggy D after the announcement and mm. yeah talking about how good the league how uh you know what what is that like, what's that corruption league mechanic called uh what's it called what just now the, the, last, the last the one scourge, scourge. yeah the scourge, how good scourge was it just popping out six links right and how awesome that was and he totally agreed and was like yeah that's awesome and then they just didn't he's like well people really like six links and they think it makes the game better because absolutely the best i mean what I, I don't know about you guys but the best thing for me last league was the the abundance of six links it made ssf so much more fun because it's like oh my god i can like fix like this parallel cage gods and i can make a build like i've never been up to ever do that this is fucking awesome why why are they not doing that why are they not like clearly everyone likes it it's awesome for the game why why aren't they well i mean giving out six long six? long term two coming? long term for poe2 like you said they are doing that and i think we will see more and more easier six links i think i'm surprised I would be surprised if there's not good ways to six things this league, uh, but I feel like they're just increasingly making it easy to get six things. Well, actually, th there is this really cool way to get a six thing. So if you do harvest, there's actually a six thing craft, Quinn. If you just farm a lot of harvest. No, that's that's a bad take, dude. <laughs> that doesn't exist. That shit is so fucking rare. I mean, I get them all the time. I don't know. Like, what's going on? Am I lucky? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got fucking streamer client. The rest of us are like <laughs> down with our pleb Bro. viewers and we just, we play ethical gameplay. See, I don't That's actually ethical. think Steel Mage has a streamer client. I think he somehow got Rise drunk and got him to sign a contract 
where like everything that was supposed to happen that was good to rise now happens to steel mage so rice just has no luck and steel mage has like twice the person's luck so that's still a double streamer client then is what you're saying yeah He's got two streamer RNGs baked into one. Yeah. It's the only thing That's that explains it. He's playing it. life on easy mode. Yep. Yeah. And I feel like Quinn's saying about the sixth thing thing. I think, um, I, I guess we'll go with the derailment. Um, sure. I think it's literally PUET's fault. That's why they don't do anything about it. Because the they're bullshit, waiting for they, they should just literally go get fusing orbs and time the drop rate by 10 overnight. Just be like, all right, you get 10 times. Or, or just like, or just make them better. Just like have some. New, or just make the recipe to six link like two hundred fusings, it, you know, like fuck, seriously, like I, I, I would, I would absolutely support a change. Like, like you just six link for fucking two hundred fusings, bro. Like you put it in the recipe, then boom, something like that, you know. Because really, I mean, I'm, I don't like you know what I'm saying. I don't like OP shit, but bro, being limited to only having like the only way I get a six link and SSF is a fucking going to. Uh, whatever is the the resident sleeper fucking map and farm that to get the dapper prodigy or whatever but i don't know what you get the idea it's super lame and super limiting and it means you have to yeah. be really generic and you can't like get like a six link unique and all that shit. Well, that's what i'm saying though like it's it's solved in poe2 so that the take there is just wait till poe2 that's the i'm well, pretty sure that's the take because he was like well, well we could do it now I, so. and I was like fucking do it chris fucking pull the trigger just let us six link our shit at the wazoo. It'll be the game is gonna be objectively better because the current implementation of six links is some archaic old bullshit that they had like this grand design of like, oh, we want people to play PUE forever, so we're gonna make six links this chase item that they have to sit there and spam. And then meanwhile, you like f spend like two weeks farming fusings, and then you sit there and you and you, you use every last fusing you've ever farmed, and it doesn't six link, and it just makes you want to fucking blow your brains out and so like in game. I feel like I feel like nearly every league now there's like a big difference in like either it's very easy to get six things or it's like like normal difficulty and they're kind of going off and on right so the last one I wouldn't be surprised if this one is slightly harder to get six things in or maybe there isn't anything that gives easier six things but I'd be expecting next one again to be very easy and I wouldn't be surprised if they very soon just have it like way easier to six think going forward I feel like they're probably experimenting with it looking at the data looking at like you know retention and whatever stats they do care about um and and seeing how it is there but I, I feel like it has gotten a lot easier to get especially generic six things over the last two years is it unfair to like remind you that you're playing ssf and uh yeah. you know that's true that's a self-imposed limitation where on on softcore trade look man yeah i can't six link some stuff sometimes and it's pretty easy to just go out and buy more fusings or to just buy the really easy cheap six links because they exist because there's a lot of different ways of getting six links these days true a lot it's like a factor of a hundred times easier compared to poe eight years ago and what you're experiencing mm. is an ssf problem which is a self-imposed limitation to make things yeah, more difficult bad. yeah but it's it's so limiting in terms of like you know like you want to play like it was a unique and do a unique build like uh, let's just make all like like every unique just drop six length like fucking any like it's just like only groshi like i mean that's my like seriously it's like it's dumb like you should be up to i mean it's like poe2 right you're just everyone you're gonna invest fuse you know julie orbs into your whatever skill you're playing and you're gonna get a six link i think that's how it should be in the current game i think this is some old system that they have in place that they're just they're sitting on it for no reason and they just hurt i only see it just hurts the game because Trade League will still have all the so, Trade League bullshit. You can still buy all the super niche rare shit and do all the super niche builds and get all the rare, like, you know, whatever you want to get for your build. We still have to drop it in SSF. This is just like, you finally get the unique that's super rare and you want to use it. You get like the, you get the tiebreaker, bro. And you're like, oh my God, I want to use the tiebreaker and make a tiebreaker build. But then you, you use every fusing you've ever farmed and it doesn't link. And then you're just like, well, fuck. I'm never playing a tiebreaker build in SSF. This isn't happening. And that's just fucking lame. Like that's like white. Like just, I, just 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 let it happen, GGG. I do gotta agree with Matha though that it is self-imposed. You could go trade league. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I could. I mean, did, uh, like if you're, you're yeah, experiencing every build and again, you want to try every fucking unique and all that, then yeah, I, you I don't want take it to trade. I like restraints, so Matha. I like I like I like restraints, and I like to have to work within a certain framework. I don't like oh, you can literally have everything you want. Like uh, that's that's not fun to me. I like to you have to work around problems, but. 
the whole thing where you can't six an item that you find. You find some super rare unique weapon and you want to use it and you can't. That's dumb. Yeah, but then this is you cherry picking part of everything you want, saying all I want in this category is no links because I've deemed be to make that. Some uh, like non generic builds, right? Being able to like do more more specialized builds than SSF. Because SSF is the superior way to play the game. Like, I mean, Chris has said that. I mean, everyone understands that. Let's be real here. Like, it is an objectively better gameplay experience. Uh, You're going to listen and, 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 and side with the better. guy that plays PoE once every four years just to test it? Yeah, he likes That's... cycling, bro, okay? It's... No, but it, I mean, it, otherwise I wouldn't play SSF all the time, right? Like, I mean, but... And I could play SSF longer, and it would be better if, if Six Links were more ubiquitous. Which I should be. Okay, anyway, that was just It'll, it'll be interesting. Railing, I, like... I think we are going to just see easier and easier six things. Um, but yeah, Quinn, how do you feel about the league mechanic? Uh, I just see it kind of like Metamorph with, uh, you know, like the other expansion. It's like this side thing that I don't really care about that much. I'm more interested in the bosses and things, and I'm just going to like, whatever. It sounds kind of cool. You like build some stuff and you get some loot. I'm probably just going to like, my, my basic plan is to like kind of save it a little bit and just do big juiced ones. Like, you know, just do like four then not do it for a while and then do four mm -hmm. but i really haven't you know obviously if there's a better way of doing it and it's like you know i'll do that but I, honestly i just like 95 percent of my focus has been everything but the league mechanic mm -hmm. yeah mathel any uh and, special and reaction and a different league mechanic for you right <laughs> yeah league mechanic league oh no. oh D -d -d didn't yeah, land league. Fuck <laughs> Uh, you played it for like the past like week when you've been going, oh, I should be doing POE, I should be doing POE, and then just kept playing, kept playing, kept playing. So that's what I'm saying. That was your focus. It's addictive. Man, it's still a shit game. I'll, I do want to get back to that. Um, the it's addictive thing, but I'll answer the other thing mm -hmm. first. Sure. Uh, league mechanic. Um, I think it looks like it'll be just nice for like early game and especially SSF. Like you know, I think it's gonna make some sort of impact to your leveling items yeah. you know, uniques and random shit and currency and all that and that's what i'm looking forward to like um actually smoothing out your curve while leveling um otherwise i don't know i don't see too much end game potential from it or like mapping sort of you know caring about it too much like yeah you'll probably use it and unless it really just starts to do so much more than it looks like it'll do and it might um, it, it does seem like it's going to be a small focus compared to grinding the rest of the um, yeah. new, new new end game and then especially specializing in shit. Like, I can't imagine you specializing in one of the new mechanics and then the arch nemesis comparing to that, you know? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I feel like they always end up choosing a fairly, like, less complicated mechanic whenever they have a big expansion. They don't want anything to, like, drag away from the expansion. Um, like it always ends up being like kind of on the back burner, I feel. So I, I, I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Like we haven't seen like super complicated mechanics lately with expansion. Yeah. I mean, I think that's usually what they go for. Yeah. Just something simple and then try and have the entire focus on the, uh, huge new content. And that's fair. I like it. Like, I don't, I don't expect anything out of the mechanic. It's just anything good, surprising, cool. But, yeah. uh, more than happy with everything else that's been out. And it's the same as Metamorph, like the entire league, right? Metamorph, basically an afterthought. The league was amazing. True. Yeah, I would agree. What was the, there was one thing, more thing you wanted to talk about before we ended? Oh, no, it was just about the addiction of LOL. Like, oh. um, like what, what is the addiction for you, Quinn? <laughs> because um, I imagine it's like about the ganking and the winning and you get that dopamine and all that. And no offense, you just haven't had that experience. <laughs> like, you've been sniped and you've been, like, getting just bad games game. where almost every single time you're going, oh, this sucked, oh, that was bad, oh, that was not fun, oh, I'm depressed. And yet every single day you're like, I want more of that and I'm coming back. Like, how is that addicting to it's you? It's like, um, it's kind of like, um, like a TV series that, like, kind of sucks but it fucking could get good uh you, i don't know if you've seen the bbc sherlock yeah, yeah at the end of every episode you're like oh fuck they're gonna get the guy they're gonna get the moriarty guy they're gonna do the thing this is gonna go somewhere and you're like fuck it's this next game next game it's gonna get good trust me next game it's gonna get good and then you occasionally get little tidbits and you think fuck this next thing is gonna be good you know because I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna pop off in this next game kill some guys and there's not gonna be any stream snipers 
because occasionally you would get that and then it just wouldn't and it wouldn't and it wouldn't and it keeps saying next game next game next game and so you are just waiting I'll for the that. payoff basically it yeah, hasn't it paid comes. off and you were waiting it never for comes it. It never but I mean, when they didn't catch that's why i'm gonna go back yeah, when they didn't catch Moriarty at the end of the season, I smashed my keyboard, man. Like, holy <laughs> shit. Oh, <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> I don't know if you saw season four, bro. That shit turned into some dog team of trash, bro. Chat, they, they killed I've, that shit. I haven't seen it. Don't worry, chat. Okay. This is no spoiler. They, I, they, 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 I wanted to smash my keyboard. I literally, like, like they, they, they ruined that shit. Okay? Kind of like what I, I did to I Dixon. don't remember... I don't remember the end of it, like, but I do remember not really agreeing with any of that to begin with, because I think the show in general was good. It wasn't just about catching Moriarty. It's like Game of Thrones. It's like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones was a better example then, and maybe that would be more resonate more with you. Because they ruined. Sure, it could have been great, but it was turned into dog town. It's just like Game of Thrones. It was fucking amazing. It was awesome, and you and you're like, well, it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better, and then and it just got worse. Isn't that the it opposite? Worse. Like it was amazing. Yeah, it I was, was amazing, and then just suddenly at the end. Got really bad. That would be like if you were winning, winning all your games and then suddenly uh, had a really bad game. Progressively went downhill. It progressively went down. Well, that's the thing. It kind of was okay initially. And then it, then then they realized they could do this stream sniping thing and it got worse. Yeah. Right. I had a taste. It's like you had a taste of, 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 the, of greatness. Okay. A taste. Okay. That's fair. I don't usually play League. Isn't that... Yeah, isn't League... Isn't the League of Legends experience normally like Game of Thrones? Like, you're at the low tiers, you're at bronze or whatever, you're owning, and then eventually you get to plat or something, and that's... You plateau, and then then it sucks. No, like, no, no. I option? was ranking up. I was literally going up ranks, and then the stream snipers came, and then I progressively downranked. But this is not, nothing to do with the Pathfinder podcast, and I have to go soon, so, uh, like... We Fuck, it's bull, and I don't want to just rant about. No, streams. it's okay. <laughs> That's what I'm about to do. I'm about to just download something like it. It's fine. <laughs> I think I'm like gold. Uh, I think I'm just gold. What rank are you actually? Iron two. Oh. Okay. I thought that That's, was a literally. Joke. Like, I haven't you, been watching. I'm in, the, and then I'm in the. I'm in the top like two percent of people. Okay, it's literally only two, like <laughs> your yeah. my average. The average player is literally like gold. That's like the average. The majority right, of players right, right. are in the gold range. So like, yeah. No, this is it is it has been prolific. The history cool. sniping, absolutely heinous. Oh. Are don't, you gonna keep playing it? Don't hit Iron Man three, dude. That was a bad movie. Just Iron Man two, we're okay with that one. That was still a pretty good movie. Iron Man three, that's a bad one. <laughs> Just whatever you do, yeah. don't go that far. Cool. But we will end it on that note. Thank you all for joining me for an amazing podcast, and hopefully, uh, we can do another one a few weeks in if everybody's down for that. And uh, thank you to chat for joining as well. Mathel, where can people consume more Mathel? Uh, Twitch TV, Mathel1, Twitter, Mathel exists, Instagram, Mathel exists, I think, if I remember. I don't do much in either of those things, but I climb a lot and I sometimes post that on Instagram. Otherwise, yeah, a bit of YouTube, Mathelification. I barely care about my YouTube these days, but I still post a little bit every now and again. Quinn? Yo, I'm going to derail everything again. Yo, so I, I said I was going to announce a thing, and I didn't announce it now. So now I'm going to announce the announcement, okay? Oh, uh, my, taking over, shamelessly I'm, taking I'm over gonna, the podcast for his own personal needs. I'm going to announce it. I've been procrastinating, and I just procrastinated to the point where it's like, I was like, fuck, I'll just, because I, you got to remember, I had like 10 minutes, I was like, fuck, I'll just do it, you know. Do it. To be fair, though, okay, so don't host me, okay, guys? Don't host me, because... Um, I'm going to do a subathon, uh, infinite subathon thing on League Launched. So you could, you could literally click on my stream at any point and you'll either see me like taking a shit, having a shower or killing a PoE bosses like a fucking god gamer. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's going to be, a, it could be like a day or it could be two days. It could be like five days. It could be a week. I'm going to, I'm going to go until I kill both the new bosses on SSFHC. Nice. Could be a day. So you're and, going forever. And, Going, okay, dude. No, no, no. Well, I mean, people will run out of money, right? Because they, right. they had to give me money to make it true. continue, true, bro. True, so, true. like, I literally can't go on forever, bro. Okay, so either I kill the boss. Oh, when I kill two bosses, like, the timer pauses. That's how, that's the rules. Right. So they can't just keep me fucking prisoner. That makes sense. But yeah, awesome. that's the plan. That's awesome. Good so luck with that. me. Host, don't host other people because I, I want me to reciprocate the cum swap, okay? All good. All good. It's, it's sad. I need hosts these days. Dying streamer. So struggling. Mm. I mean, there's no prize money for this league, so I mean, I kind of rely on that income. <laughs> like, true. fuck. Steel, what about you? Where can we find more Steel Mage? 
Um, well, if Quinn's streaming 24-7, I mean, shit, I mean, I guess on Quinn's channel then, I mean... You'll find him in his chat, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, though. Um, I'll, I'll be streaming Twitch TV, Steel Mage, literally just that, because I don't do anything else, because I just play the game, basically. So, easy. Very nice, very nice. I'm Zizrin, just on all medias, and I can do a little announcement as well. Uh, we're giving away, at least, a uh, Lenovo laptop from my new sponsor. And if I can get to maps in less than five hours, we're giving away two. So, thank you all for joining me. Hope you're all excited for 3.17. Good luck. Remember to have fun. Don't always do what streamers tell you to do. Yeah, good luck. Try to die less than I do.